Just what you would expect. Capacity crowd with all eyes in the state of South Carolina on the capital, Columbia, where the 5A battle is about to take place between a Dutch Fork team, a dynasty looking to make it six in a row. Only 5A champions the state has ever known. And the Gaffney Indians with 17 titles all time. They're back in black. And they're going to settle the 5A state championship next. dynasties for the 5A title. It's the new standard in South Carolina football against the historic power and something's got to give between a 14-0 Gaffney squad, a 12-0 Dutch Fork squad here today. And with that, we welcome you to Benedict College and the state capital of Columbia. Our pleasure to have you with us for this 5A title broadcast alongside the coach, Eddie Muldrow, the former Gamecock and outstanding Hall of Fame coach here in South Carolina, and Stacey Huff, Midland's personality, Jason Patterson here and again. Such a joy to have you with us for one that has been circled for a long, long time. First of all, Coach, moments away from a state championship environment, how do you put a chance like this, a lifetime opportunity like this, into words? Well, I, th I think you try to convince your players that you've worked hard in all season, preseason, jamborees, regular season, conference championship, and playoffs to get to this point, and you deserve it. Go out and play your best tonight. Stacy, quite a journey here for both these teams. Let's take a look at the brackets. This is our Farm Bureau journey to a championship. For Dutch Fork, they had to go through a familiar foe in Fort D. Absolutely. Fort D gave them all they wanted and more. Late interception sealed it. That was the big matchup. A good Sumter team along the way. A lot of talent along the way, but Dutch Fork gets to where they're used to being, what we call the Dutch Fork Invitational right here on the last Saturday of the year. Yeah, usual situation here <laughs> when it comes Christmas time in Columbia. For Gaffney, they got through one of their old rivals, Spartanburg, also beat Northwestern on the road, and the defending upper state champions, Hannah, along the way at home, Coach. They did, and they had, they had a few struggles, especially Spartanburg was a tough game, and they pulled away in the second half, but I think they're battle-tested just like Dutch Fork, and they feel like they deserve to be here. Team that have been knocking on the doorstep time and time again. Finally able to make it back. First time since 2012 when these two teams met. Davin Patterson, something special as the engineer of this Dutch Fork offense, Stacey. Yeah, a senior. He waited his turn behind some great quarterbacks this senior year. Finally, his time, 134 completions, almost 2,500 yards, 28 touchdowns, and seven rushing touchdowns. He's more dangerous with his legs than people know. And the weapons in his arsenal, well, you're going to get acquainted with them throughout the night tonight. He has got playmakers all over the field. For Gaffney, a couple of thousand-yard backs. In fact, we've got three 1,000-yard backs in this game, and it's Tyler Smith who is the feature back in Gaffney's offense. He certainly is, but their other tailback has also rushed for over 1,000 yards. And don't forget their quarterback. Uh, he, he, you forget about him as far as the touchdown passes he's completed and also the yardage he's racked up for the Gaffney offense. That's what we said about Dutch Fork, two of both these teams on the field tonight. Going to be a fun one. Let's go ahead and break down the keys to the game. They stand as our Ingles Food for Thought, brought to you by our friends at Ingles. Low prices, love the savings. Coach, you're talking about Gaffney needing to spoil the party by being low-key today. Yes, uh, they, they need to come in the game not being too excited. I know they're happy to be here, but they need to play within themselves. They're a good football team, because obviously to get here, you have to be a good football team, and they want to be that spoiler. Everybody has tried to knock Dutch Fork off, and they want to be the ones that can say, we did it. Play with emotion, but channel the emotion. Stacy. on the Dutch Fork side of things, structure, it's the program, it's the plan, and they're back here again. It's the expectation. The seniors on this class, remember, they were middle schoolers the last time Dutch Fork did not win a state championship. They have a regiment, they have a plan, they have a system, they trust the process, and it keeps working year after year. They just have to stick to that plan and try to do it one more time. It's the pride and tradition of Gaffney and the process which has established Dutch Fork as the team everybody's chasing in 5A in South Carolina, and they'll settle the latest battle for a Palmetto State title on the other side of the break. All South Carolinians aged five years and older are now eligible for the COVID-19 vaccine. 
For help finding a vaccine location in your area, visit scdhec.gov slash vaxlocator or call 1-866-365-8110. COVID-19 vaccines are free and don't require ID or insurance. Visit scdhec.gov slash vaxlocator or call 1-866-365-8110 to find a vaccine location near you. QFS is looking for Class A CDL owner-operators in your local area. QFS offers an excellent owner-operator program with huge fuel discounts and great weekly pay. If you are a self-motivated owner-operator in the local area with two-plus years over-the-road experience, give our office a call or visit us online to learn more about joining one of the fastest-growing companies in the industry. Well, they own 22 state championships in South Carolina, officially between them. They're just about set to do battle. Dutch Fork and Gaffney, neither team with a blemish across the course of the regular season. There he is, seven titles in the state of North Carolina, trying to make it seven titles in the state of South Carolina in his usual spot and in his usual attire. Coach Knott's in the shorts again. He's finally got shorts weather, though, Coach. He does. <laughs> I, I think every every game for him is midsummer wear, so he's ready to go. 400-plus wins across the Carolinas, and he has set a new standard for football in the Carolinas, Stacey Huff. Without a doubt, look at that record right there, 141-21 and one record of Dutch. For a lot of people don't know, he played a little cornerback at Duke University back in the day. He has a master's degree from Duke, but he's been a great coach in North Carolina and South Carolina, and the tradition has been well established. Again, you, you talk about the overall win total across both states for Tommy Knott, 437 victories for him, and he has, again, led this Foxes group to all the 5A titles that have ever been handed out in South Carolina. But you know the story of these Gaffney Indians. They boast the... 17 state championships. Officially, it's 16, right. Stacy. But Gaffney will tell you it's 17 in the books. That's because you go all the way back to that title in 1961. Back in the day, South Carolina had the kind of format college football used to, where you had two polls, both voted. Gaffney ended up number one in one poll in 61, Greenwood the other. They claimed that one as well. Yes. And here come the 17-time state champions and the upper state champions out of Cherokee County, and Region 3-5-A, the Gaffney Indians have taken the field. And they have this lower bowl, they have filled up the home side of Charlie W. Johnson Stadium, and it is loud. They've been here all day tailgating, and you see the signs, and they've been raring to go since morning. And now the reigning champions making them wait just a little bit longer on the far side is Coach Knotts and the Dutch Fork. Silver Foxes are just about to take the field. Now, you know what's in the forefront of everyone's mind, and we'll talk about it throughout the broadcast. They're going after six for 60. His flag is flying in front of everyone else, and here come the Foxes looking for a seventh title all time and a six in a row, Eddie Muldrow. Yes, and I think, you know, having a little bit of extra motivation, those players realize they lost a teammate early in the season, and They've kept that on their mind all year, and I'm sure they're playing for that young man and his family. So I'm we sure will they'll get a great effort tonight. We yeah. will dedicate this broadcast. You want to stick around between the first and second periods to yes. that fallen hero. Absolutely. So many Absolutely. are the hearts of the entire state with that group. And, uh, boy, we have one heart in moments like that. Do we not, Stacey Huff? And that's what sports does. It unifies everyone. Let's take a moment to check in with the third member of our broadcast team. Here is Natalie Spella on the field. 
Stay strong on hand for the grand finale of South Carolina High School football. They are loud, they are ready, and this crowd definitely is speaking for themselves today with this most anticipated game of the weekend. I'm excited. I know you guys are ready up there, so let's get this thing underway. Sustained success has to be one of the toughest things to bring about. Everybody's gunning for you. Every year you have the target on your back, and yet Dutch Fort continues to make it here time and again, Coach. Yes, they just seem to keep reloading. Uh, they'll graduate great players, and they'll develop underclassmen to turn into great players. And they've found that formula for success, and they're not going away from it. Coach Knott said it breeds winning, it breeds confidence, but success can also breed complacency. It can also breed entitlement. It speaks to what he's done, that he's avoided the latter yeah. and kept the former going. I spoke with him before a regular season game we did here on our local Friday Night Rivals broadcast, and he said to me on the field, he said, the thing is, fighting overconfidence with these young folks has been his biggest obstacle. Here is Dan Jones, 111 wins in his Gaffney tenure. Came on board at Gaffney and his assistant in the early 90s as part of those championship runs, Coach. And here he is, his name now among the legends, Bob Prevent. A.L. Curtis, Joe Montgomery, Phil Strickland, whose career just ended, won nearly 100 games at Gaffney. We'll talk about where he fits, but he has his Indians back here for the first time since he won the title against who? Dutch Fork <laughs> in 2012. And with that, a foot into it, and we are underway as Dutch Fork will have the first crack at it and going to go ahead and get things rolling right away. Toss far side, Antonio Williams quickly involved and across <laughs> the 40-yard line. And you've been waiting for it. We're happy to bring it to you. That was the John's RV Sales and Service kickoff. John's RV Sales and Service featuring one of South Carolina's largest selections of new and pre-owned RVs. Come see them in Lexington or visit them online at johnsrv.com. How about that start, Coach? That was a play I saw them practicing. I'm saying, well, I'm not sure to do it, but they practiced it both on the left side and right <laughs> side, knowing, not knowing which side the Gaffney would kick to. Uh, and they almost broke that one. They were just one block away from making that a big play. A little bit of life in this place, Stacey Huff. Uh -huh. It's a very energ energetic crowd right now. You can feel the tension in the building in the stadium. Davin Patterson on the first play from scrimmage. He's going to toss it to Jarvis Green. And Green's going to have plenty on the first down play. Gets about half the yardage Dutch Fork needs. We've introduced you to Davin Patterson. You already saw Antonio Williams. There was Jarvis Green. Here's the rest of the Dutch Fork offense. Patterson, the quarterback, the senior we feature. Green, outstanding junior tailback. Williams, everybody's All-American. Nick Sowell, 6'4", talented. Smith, a tight end. They play four tight ends. Stuttenberg, Monroe, Honeycutt, Murphy, and Ethan Benson, a very good offensive lineman, number 70. Ethan Benson, they'll run behind him a lot. That's our Papaski and Shirley Law starting lineups. They represent personal injury. Long for that workers cap at Papowski and Shirley. They're empowering you. Check them out. Papowski and Shirley, sponsors of our starting lineups. Here's another dose of Antonio Williams. He's explosive. It's inside Gaffney territory at the 39. Goes right over Bradley and is out of wow. bounds. And just like that, Dutch Fork has set up shop thanks to the first Will Lou Gray opportunity school first down of the game at the 38. That was a chin strap check right there by Williams. Here we go. Well, here's Patterson. You know he can do some damage with the feet as well. He's down near the red zone. So Dutch Fork wasting no time on the doorstep of the initial sound and images red zone chance here. In fact, as they move the chains, let me tell you, sound and images, your commercial audio visual solution in South Carolina. Find out how by visiting soundandimages.net. And right on that 20-yard line, here's the give to Green. And this time, Green going to be handled. Gray Sean Littlejohn initially, and then out of it is Patterson. Faked everybody out. Those of us up here in the booth and everybody else. And there is Dutch Fork. Did quickly I, into the end zone. Did I talk about it in the open? He's more dangerous with his legs. David Patterson, a threat with the legs he shows you on the first drive. Do not sleep on number 11 in white, folks. Look at him. Keep it at the final moment. Takes some contact here, but is able to get away from one of Gaffney's better linebackers and dives into the end zone for the touchdown. Why did we highlight Davin Patterson in the open there with so many playmakers out there for Dutch Fork? I think he may have just shown us <laughs> why. The Dutch Fork QB, the latest in a line of outstanding state championship quarterbacks for Dutch Fork. Has the champs out front, 7-0 early. Is your child struggling in school? Do you know a child 16 to 19 years of age who has dropped out, lacks discipline, or is on a destructive path? Then give the Will Lou Gray Opportunity School a try. 
The Military Style School provides an alternative education to young adults in need of a second chance by offering academic instruction by state certified teachers and job-based training. Students live on campus during the 14-week program, which is virtually free. For more information, call us or visit willlugray.org. Silver Fox is up a touchdown. Davin Patterson showing what he can do with the wheels to make it 7 nothing. We remind you, stick around. That'll be one of the highlights you'll see as a part of the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control Halftime Report. Special interviews from South Carolina High School League personalities. First half stats along with those visuals like the one you just witnessed. All a part of our South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control Halftime Report. They also want you to be educated, learn everything you need to know about fighting the spread of COVID-19. Check them out at scdhec.com gov slash COVID-19. Another John's RV sales kickoff coming right away. Gaffney learning why Dutch Fork has been the champs for a while now, Coach. So many things you have to honor with Dutch Fork out there offensively. Right. With their quarterback being a threat now, that really makes them a triple threat, not only with the running back and their passing game, but they certainly have to honor the quarterback's run as well. Justin Welch puts a foot into this. You're watching the kicking game, I know, for Dutch Fork as well. A little deep in the depth chart for Dutch Fork kicking-wise. Haven't kicked a field goal all year. Haven't needed to a lot, but that is a concern. Yes, yeah, so they're down to their fourth kicker now, and uh, it's just a matter of circumstances that develop that way. And, and if they keep playing like that on offense, they don't have to worry too much. Does not matter that much. You're right. Here the Gaffney Indians take the field for the first time offensively. Grayson Loftus getting set to take the snap for Gaffney at the 20-yard line. And here's the first dose of that Gaffney running game as Tyler Smith goes across the 35. You'll see the two backs as you take a look at the starting lineup for Gaffney, brought to you by Popowski and Shirley Law. Stacey, I'll have you walk through the Gaffney offense here. Who else do you highlight? Well, you mentioned Tyler Smith with Little John plays wide receiver. And now we have a Little John. At, they can run it as well, but the offensive line is real good. We'll get to those linemen at some point. And we'll take a look at the Dutch Fork defense in a moment also. There's Edward Jeffries. They call him Sugar Jeffries. Has a team-high 38 catches. Comes up, for the he's, he's up limping. Comes up limping. Indians limping. this season and a little slow coming up. Gives us a chance to look at the Dutch Fork D. And, Coach, this defense, they make you earn it. Yes, they've been a kind of a bend and don't break defense. C.J. Uh, Wicker and Perry at linebacker spot are two of their stronger players. And also, uh, Daly in the secondary, I think, has four interceptions as well. Daly's a D1 prospect at free safety. The so, son of Stacy Daly that played at Auburn. Exactly. That's the Popowski and Shirley Law Dutch Fork starting lineup. This tossed out near side. They'll try to get it into the hands of Tyler Smith any way possible. He is met quickly to the ball, Paul Taylor. Other thing you notice about this Dutch Fork D, Stacy, how quickly they swarm to the football. When they know where it's going, you're going to see, in this case tonight, white jerseys everywhere. Their schemes are sound, and they're very fast to the ball, especially 38 and 29. Wicker and Perry, heat-seeking missiles at linebacker. 11 interceptions, 13 fumbles, forced, 10 of them recovered, and two defensive touchdowns on the year for this Dutch Fork squad. Do not allow a lot in terms of points. But able to win a tight one against Fort D last time out. What of a defensive struggle. This group stepped up and tripped up is Tyler Smith. Though he does cross over the 45. It's going to be a, a on, spot. on third and short. This is going to be very close. Perry made a good tackle, but it may not be good enough. Take a look here. He's going to come in and get it. They just got the top of the shoestring and he falling forward. That's going to be, they're going to mark it a little short, I believe. They may, they may measure. They are going to measure, having already called for the sticks yes, from sir. the far side. I think he. I think let's go ahead and take a shot at it, guys. I think he has it, Coach. What you think? Short by four <laughs> inches. <laughs> Specific. Well, I'm going to tell you what. You can't ask for a more direct <laughs> and, and, and answer than the one you just got from Eddie Muldrow Short there. They're going to stretch it out. Let's see if Gaffney has moved the chains. I think he got it. And that looks a little short, and it's it a is. Card. Four inches, Coach. That looked, that looked Coach, pretty close Coach, to four inches. Coach Mojo might have got a tip from the officials. He, just, he knows things. 
Let's talk about our <laughs> officials for just a moment while they reset those chains. Tommy Brush is our referee. John Peake, the umpire. Linesman is Todd Moore. Line judge, Ricky Robinson. Stephen Hughes is the back judge. Field judge is Wallace Hardy. Side judge, Jeffrey Nettles, the ECO. Gary Lopridge in this one, and Samuel Felder also completing this group. And it is an honor, Coach, when you are selected as an official to be a part of the state championship game. It certainly is. They work for this all year, and it's certainly a great honor for each of them on the field. Fourth down, Gaffney's offense up to the line. Tyler Smith, a part of that personnel grouping as he looks to this near sideline. Indians showing as if they're going to go for this. Fourth and short from the 47-yard line. And Smith awaiting the snap. Now a little bit of communication between Smith and Sawyer Whitman, one of the Gaffney captains. So jumbo action. He's right off his left hip. They're going to run in behind Whitman. And enough for Gaffney to move the chain. That's a Will Lou Gray first down for the Indians. Has to be a moment in which Gaffney can exhale a little bit. And Stacy, an unusual spot for Gaffney to be in. When you have 17 state titles, to come into the game as an underdog and find yourself down seven points early, this is a different scenario for Gaffney. It really is. They've always been Goliath in the matchup. This time they get to be David, and they're answering the bell right now. Absolutely. 8.26 to go in our opening period, and Gaffney, when you talk about answering the bell, trying to do that right now on this drive after a quick scoring strike from the state champions, and that's across the 50. It'll put Gaffney into Dutch Fork territory for the first time, but every yard comes with a punishing hit for Tyler Smith right now. A lot of pass popping down below us right here. Snap, crockle, and pop. Let's go look at that coaching staff on the sideline working hard for the Gaffney Indians. Talked about Dan Jones and how he now is mentioned among those Gaffney legends. Remember, these two teams met in 2012 for the state title. 34-22 Gaffney. That was right at the start yeah. of this Dutch Fork run. Dan Jones made the point earlier this week. Most of these kids were seven, eight, nine years old when they played the last time. This is a flag down at the 47 after the pass to the far side. Coach, I know you had your hands all over that. It looked like the motion man turned up early, but it could have been a – let's see what he calls. Yeah, that, that play didn't have a chance. It's on Gaffney. It's a legal shift. That's what they call it. Yeah, so a little, little too much going on in the backfield back there, but a good job of pursuing by Dutch Fort. You saw the team speed on that play, even though it'll be counted out by the flag anyway. Everybody that plays Dutch Fork, all the other coaches we talked to, here's the Illegal call. motion on the offense is refused. Third down. Third, third down. One, wanted the opportunity to get the down rather than the yardage. So it wasn't here. negated. Good play. Stacy, everybody that we talked to, all the coaches across the state, they mentioned the team speed of the linebacking core for Dutch Ford. I tell you, Perry and Wicker, they really like they shot out of a cannon. They get to the ball, they get there with a bad attitude when they get there as well. So Gaffney with another third down. Just converted on a fourth down a moment ago. This is a third. <laughs> And they're going to need a long six, the 42-yard line of Dutch Fork, what the Indians are looking for. This time they fake the give to Smith. And a little sit-down route underneath in the flat, and there's running room near side. And finally out of bounds at the 13-yard line is Jeffries. He had the earliest catch for the Indians, and he has the big play of the moment for Gaffney here. That'll move the chains and a whole lot more. He just ran out of bounds. Yes. Sure. Yeah, Stacy noticed earlier that he came out limping a little bit, so I think he was maybe yeah. favoring protecting the ankle and he ran out of bounds yeah. instead of yeah. trying to pursue to get the touchdown. Yeah, this young man, you know, he pulls up right here and goes out of bounds. Yeah, he might be still a little banged up. At the end of that, did not turn that up. Has a big play for Gaffney. Has Gaffney in the sound. The sound and images. And images red zone for the first time. The Indians there at the 15-yard line. Well, I tell you, Stacy. How quickly these two teams can create red zone opportunities already visible and trying to weave through traffic is Smith but there's plenty of traffic and Dutch Fork is there to snuff it out Man, a lot of hit going on. I'm, I'm impressed by the physicality both defenses are brought to the game early 99 Sebastian Powell there for Dutch Fork among others but they get helmets to the ball Powell had 25 tackles one sack on the year of course you you highlight Wicker and Perry and what they can do, but that front line. Yes. Uh, Richardson, Powell, Commander spent some time there. Others, yep. they're just as difficult to break through. They are. Richardson, one of the captains tonight for a nice ball game as well, number 34, senior for them. Watch him. He gets in the backfield regularly. Seven sacks on the year and 18 tackles for loss from jersey number 34, Richardson. And here's a first look at Ken Littlejohn. You talked about it, Coach. Yes, the 1,500 yards for Tyler Smith, but 1,300 yards for Ken Littlejohn. 
13 touchdowns, has a long rush of 69. He's done some damage as well. Those backs between them average 7.1 per carry. Yes. So you don't drop off any when you put him in. It gives the other back just a little bit of a breather. And so they're certainly a strong dual threat. Coach Knott said there's always some little Johns on Gaffney's team. They got three of them on this He pointed that out. It's a family affair. It's in your DNA, the sport of football in Gaffney. And so many familiar names from those earlier title runs. Third down, going to be intercepted in the end zone, able to bring it out and have it across the 15 to the 20 and all the way up to the 30-yard line after the pick is Nick Wright, the senior DB, with his early championship moment. Read the quarterback's eyes right there and got in the way of the football, and he met the ball at the goal line. Take a look at the read right here. He did a good job. He stayed a little too long in that direction. He read flow right with the ball, and it led him to it, and the decision to run it out was a good one. Good run after the catch. 11 interceptions. The ball was tipped, by the way. Excuse me, Jason. No, you're exactly right. 11 interceptions for this team along the way on the year. He has a 12th, his first. Here's we got the call. a sideline warning. Okay. On the defense. Get back, coach. Got to get on the job right there. But somebody got to handle that football that helped the interception happen. Right there. Tipped up. And there on the what was going to be what Gaffney was looking for is a third, third or fourth down conversion on the drive. Instead picked up. And here's Dutch Fork set up at their own 30 with five and a half to play in the opening period. It's Patterson who took it home to complete the earlier Dutch Fork drive. Claps his hands and waits on the football. Going to fire away. Wide open spaces for Antonio Williams. Williams, a highly regarded prospect. Stacy, he has narrowed it. He has narrowed it to Auburn, Georgia, Ole Miss, South Carolina, Clemson. But there are a lot of Saturday teams wanting his services. I'm playing on a Saturday tonight. He's going to be playing on Saturdays for a while. For a long, long time, at least three years. And all P5s, and I, I'm hearing an announcement may come either immediately after this game or next week. So we'll find out pretty soon, I believe, what he's going to do. Keep an eye on that. He's one of the quiet leaders, they say, on this squad. He certainly knows how to get open, as you saw there. And uh, everybody talking about his hands as a wide receiver. Able to display them for you again. Cuts the seam and picks up a first down. That's another Will Lou Gray first down. You missed his numbers. 68 catches, <laughs> 1,414 yards, 13 touchdowns. Oh, by the way, he's returned three punts and one kick. So he's got 17 total TDs on the year. He is such a threat. And here comes that Dutch Fork attack up across the 50 and into Gaffney territory. Coach? On the previous play, one of the unsung heroes for Dutch Fork is Dutch, uh, Josh Smith. He goes in motion a lot as a tight end, the lead blocker. Uh, but he's caught three touchdown passes and averages 29 a catch. So he knows how to get open, too. Josh Smith, Christian Jones, Prince Ross, Justin Ring, all a part of that tight end group. And Stacy, one thing that sets Dutch Fork apart, the use of those tight ends. Yeah. Nobody uses tight ends as much as Coach Knotts in his formation. Mainly the block, though. Flag down. A flag as this is tossed back toward Williams. When you talk about what this Dutch 14 does well as we await the call here, the use of the tight ends, they'll go 11 personnel, they'll go 12 personnel, all those tight end sets. But a great job with that counter scheme so often, Stacy, that we've already seen in this contest. Here comes the call from our referee, Tommy Brush. Illegal formation on the offense. To, 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 your, to your comment, Jason, they do a lot in the backfield, and that time it backfired on them, but they use a lot of tight end motion, a lot of different formations, and it, it's, it's to, to his philosophy, he confused a lot of high school defenses with the complexity of those tight ends. Screens, reverses, all the, all on these. down the line, and Coach, I know you were maybe most impressed with how creative Dutch Fork is about getting it into the hands of the backs and the receivers. They, they get it in their best players in a lot of different ways, so it creates, it creates a lot of mismatches. Also got to tip your cap that offensive line play on both sides. Two great lines are these two 5A battlers wouldn't be here. This tossed out to Williams again. Patterson to Williams. That's going to be a familiar refrain across the course of this one. And inside the 40, a little extra at the end, and here come the barrage of flags. Williams did a little extra on the sideline. He's been physical. The times he's touched the football, he finished with a little extra shoulder out of bounds. Watch this at the end of this play. He did a great job being physical at the end of the run, but it was a little extra something. I will show it to you. Right, running behind a tight end, we talked about it. That was good, but right here, that last hand across the helmet area was too much. That's, but he's, he's a fired-up senior right now. That's going to cost you the yardage and then some playing like it means everything. And here comes once again Tommy Brush, our referee, to fill you in. Dead ball, personal foul on the defense. 
Oh, the deep. No, no, okay. <laughs> he said, no, no, okay, wait a he minute. He said, wait a minute. John, hold on, hold on. Record scratch, record scratch. He said, wait a minute. <laughs> it's on the offense. It's on Antonio Williams. He said, wait a minute now. He had him scratching their Whoa. head a little bit there, Coach, for a he moment. He did. He just got it turned around. <laughs> I'm <Okay>. human. <laughs> he said, exactly. I'm human. Well, well, you know, <laughs> let, let, me, let me tell you, as many times as we say the wrong name or have the oh, wrong right. idea or see the, the wrong one. deal, I'm not gonna be the one to we criticize completely that. understand. Absolutely. And again, we'll say this about our officials tonight. A, a great tongue-in-cheek moment for that gentleman, but yeah. they are the cream of the crop, they and are. we tip our cap to them. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, one thing we've learned, it's hard work, it's a lifetime of dedication, and these are the best at what they do in the Palmetto State. And, and really, this is their part-time job. They have a regular job, but I like what he said. He said, I'm human, That's so exactly I make right. mistakes, <laughs> I'll admit it. And guess what? They got the call right yeah. in the end. It was pointed out by our producer. Yeah, that's what matters. And that's what matters. But that was Kevin's good. exactly right. This is the important thing is when all is said and done, the call is correct. Second down. And a ways to go for Patterson. He can get there quickly, but this is going to be short hopped and incomplete. Let's go back for a moment to that Patterson to Williams connection. At the end of the third quarter in the 4D game for a 21-7 lead last week, big difference-making play, 96 yards on the connection, and it has been such a fruitful connection for Dutch Fork all year. It's about trust. They know where to find each other. They know Antonio Williams is available in all facets of the game, punt team, kick team, and definitely in those wide receiver patterns. He and Patterson have a great uh, synergy between the two of them. Let's see who they turn to on third down. In motion is Ross here. Tight end block. going to go to who else? Williams, you said it. The block springs him, and he's going to be past the marker to move the chains for Dutch Fork on third and 17. He lowers the shoulder again. He's running very physically. He gets up hurt. He gets up this time. Look at his pads. Jack, I hope he's not banged up. Look at the pads. The right side up. And the left arm. See how he, we'll see how he falls on this play. Watch the end of this play. Make sure he's okay on this. But watch the physical way he finishes this, this play. Coach, you mentioned it. Not only the motion by Prince Ross, but how about the block by Prince Ross that helped spring in there. Keeper by yeah. Patterson as we go back to action here. I know as old coach, you love seeing those blocking by those <laughs> big there. guys out on the perimeter. You got to block them to get, give your teammates a chance to make their bigger play. Williams back in. Patterson a little gimpy, but uh, uh, Antonio Williams back in the ball game. He got his pads adjusted. He's okay, and he's back in the lineup. You think this is going to be a battle tonight? Yeah, yes, I mean, I you look at the physical yes, nature of yes. this game, and here we are with 344 still remaining yeah. in the opening period between these two heavyweights. Up top, oh, what a catch. right back to Williams. What a catch. There oh. are those oh, my hands. Goodness. Coach, hands, hands, hands. Yeah. What we were told yeah. about Antonio Williams, there they are. There they are. He called it at the highest point of what they did. They sent the tight end in motion, cleared out, and had one on one coverage over here. And yeah, that's just going up. It in, in a little traffic. Right back to Williams with no problems. Now here's Patterson. He moves through traffic. Has a second rushing touchdown of the night. Two TDs for Patterson. Dutch Fork with a lead of 13-0 at the 326 mark first period. Well, I'll tell you what. Gaffney rolled out, rolled up the sidewalks. The whole town came down to Columbia, but Dutch Fork trying to silence a huge crowd tonight with their first two drives. And they're going to need them. That's a great point. They're going to need them as time rolls on here. But Dutch Fork, the touchdown run by Patterson of distance the interception on the goal line when Gaffney was driving Freshman. and then they respond now here are those kicking woes that you highlighted coach Muldrow tuck that one away in the back of your mind as the extra point is missed the, the, David Patterson is going to be missed at some point but he is putting a memory together with a couple of touchdowns in the state title game for a 13-0 lead When I say this city has something for everyone, I genuinely mean it. You can check out all kinds of green spaces, public art installations, our athletic venues are top notch. Whether you wanna wake up and grab an ice cream with a friend or go get fancy and have a date night somewhere down in the Vista, you can do it all. This city is very embracing of pets. Your dog will be more than welcome to experience Columbia with you. It's never gonna be stressful to plan a really fun day in Columbia.
A great weekend to experience Columbia, South Carolina's favorite attractions without stretching the wallet. The Cool Pass combination ticket allows you to do so. You can visit three major attractions, the State Museum, the Adventure Children's Museum, and Riverbank Zoo. You'll pay less than the cost of individual tickets, and after all the fun, have discounts on local souvenirs to take back home. Get your tickets or give them as a gift today at coolpasstickets.com. Well, everybody having made the trip to the state capitol, enjoying themselves right now, and the crew that made that 18-mile journey across the way from Omo, South Carolina, really loving life, looking for six in a row, six for 60. That's been the mantra, and they're up 13-0 despite the missed extra point just a moment ago. Here is our Johns RV kickoff as Gaffney will have a return from the 11-yard line. Going to be up across the 25 and 36-yard line is where Smith is going to be down. Let's head to the field again for a little more on this environment. Let's check in with Natalie. Yeah, guys, fans here, they want a competitive game. It is not exactly something we've seen so far this weekend. When it comes to the four games, we have seen winners scoring 163 points, losers just 41. So we're looking at some big deficits that have taken place so far here this weekend. All victories also coming from the upper state. So that could change right now. Dutch Fork up 13 nothing. We were just talking about the physical nature of this game. Thanks, Natalie. And right now, a catch-your-breath moment for everybody on the Gaffney side, Coach, is Smith on the return is not yet up at the 36-yard line. Yeah, and of course that affects your team mentally, but uh, they do have another good running back, so it's not like they're just dropping off to a, a JV player or a person hadn't played much this But the year. most important thing, Stacy, is for all these kids on both sides, you want to see them be able to hop back up and continue Absolutely. best versus best all night long, all right. and so and we there he is. He's are up. happy to see the nice round yeah. of applause yeah. that will be there for Tyler yeah. Smith. Yeah. He actually delivered the blow that time, but it's a collision sport, so when you deliver a blow, you can still you see the fans on both sides, good sports, we should give it a hand, but you need depth, though. Even though they have other good players, this is against Dutch Fork. You need all hands on deck. You can't afford to lose anybody. If Smith is up, moving around. We hope to see him back in the game, especially, Jason, this being his senior year. And I'll say the larger point, again, you want to see everybody's best on the Absolutely. field to the very end because Absolutely. they have worked not just off season, not just a 14 or 12 game season, whether you're talking Gaffney, but for a lifetime for this moment and to see them be able to continue is huge. Here is the other of those backs, Ken Littlejohn. He'll reverse fields and find his way near the Gaffney sideline at the 40. All that running, he did come away with positive yards, about three of them when all was said and done for Ken Littlejohn. In what way, Coach, are Ken Littlejohn and Tyler Smith similar and different based upon what you've seen from them in a small sample size? I really can't tell much difference. They, they kind of complement each other. Their running styles are similar, uh, but they're, very, they're both very strong runners, but also they, their average per, per play is almost identical as well. I haven't had a chance to talk a lot about Grayson Loft this yet. Let's see if the game gives us an opportunity after this play to walk through his numbers. <laughs> Going to pick up a first down as he tosses it near side to Jeffries. All right, Stacey, Loft is 156 completions in 268 attempts, 22 touchdowns off 2,100 yards passing, 2,158 to be specific, has a 90-yard toss along the way this year. Yeah. Those are some pretty gaudy numbers yeah. for a quarterback who has two 1,000-yard rushers. Exactly. He's a junior, 6'4", 210. He has next-level size as well, so he has a bright future, but right now he has a chance to play for a championship, and he'll be effective before it's all said and done. He's rushed for over 100 yards, a, a touchdown on the ground. Well, on cue, here right, he goes, right. right onto the heart of that Benedict watching, logo for watching. about four yards just when you're not thinking about it right you have to honor Grayson Loftus wheels as well but it's strange he's only carried it 46 times this year and average uh, three and a half yards loss per carry so they just trying to give him a little bit of the same that's medicine yes yeah, because those sacks kind of hurt him I guess but he showed a little burst right there but the turf monster might have got him yeah it <laughs> affects the quarterbacks passing or excuse me rushing statistics as well alongside those gaudy passing numbers look into the sideline for this call second down Gaffney needing the 40 yard line as they try to claw back after a couple of quick Dutch Fork TDs from his counterpart, Davin Patterson. And a big lick at the Landon end. Danley. And trying to stretch out and grab hold of that on the far side for Gaffney, the intended target, Dowdle. And he yeah. is going to be yeah. a yeah. little yeah. slow to get up, yeah. and understandably so. The teammates are for the receiver are motioning quickly for the train. When they do that that fast, it's usually relatively uh, something to take seriously. But Landon Danley delivered a blow. And that wasn't a defensive receiver. He got there right about the time of the ball. The defensive back hasn't been able to make a play on that. And the Dutch Fork training staff, they're quicker yes. than the Gaffney training yes. staff because it happened on their side of the field. And now 
Coach Dan Jones of Gaffney making his way across there. So a second moment of concern in the last few sequences for the Indians here. And it looks like they're going to be able to, to bring him to his feet. So yeah. Jadarius Little John up mm-hmm. under his own power, which is a great sign. Yeah, he just got hammered. He, like his leg, like his legs kind of got hit a little bit. It was a big hit, but his leg kind of went in the wrong direction. And hopefully he can walk that off and continue the ball game. But it's good to see him put some weight on that left foot, the left leg. Little John, 28 receptions, 489 yards, has a team best six receiving touchdowns on the year. This thrown a little high, and he was in that vulnerable position, Coach. I think he got hit more in the stomach, chest area. And yeah, he's grabbing his left, left side there as well. So may have got, got the breath knocked out. Yeah, and landed awkwardly. I think both of those did. Third down coming. Gaffney facing another third down. They had a fourth down conversion, a third down conversion, of a major variety ahead of the third down play, which was picked off in the end zone. So here's another key third down for the Indians. Dutch Fork showing all kind of pressure. Then backing out of there is C.J. Wicker, who, as you know, is the field general for this team on defense. See what Loftus opts to do with it. Looking deep, going deep. There's Jeffries again. He's got it for a Gaffney TD. The Indians are on the board. That was a route that worked hard on this week. They were trying to split the safeties, and he got a little separation there, and the quarterback was throwing those excellent in practice when I got to watch it. Well, just when it looked as if Dutch Fork may be opening things up early, that familiar refrain, the Indians have an answer with a deep shot for Jeffrey's sixth receiving touchdown of the year for the leading gentleman in receptions on the season for Gaffney. And We remind you with each of these touchdowns, you want to visit Rushes, nine locations in the Midlands to serve you today. That Rushes touchdown going to keep Gaffney. You know, so much talk about the rush in this one. And Loftus is reminding us he can also do some damage with the arm. Speaking of Rushes, sponsor of that touchdown, good job rushing early to set that up. But watch the protection of offensive line. They stopped the pass rush right here. That's a good, clean pocket. He stepped up in it, climbed the pocket, as they say. And he had a clean area to throw the ball, nobody in his face, and it worked to perfection. Good job by the boys up front for Gaffney. That's a great point, Stacy. because, Coach, we talk so much about it when a quarterback does not have time. Rarely do we give credit to the Hunter Turners, Ethan Woods, Johan Aragon, Sawyer Whitmans, and T.J. Edringtons when they do have time. Both of these offensive lines outstanding. And also, Sawyer Whitman has been selected for the North-South game this year, so he's a... One of their top linemen as well. One of the Gaffey captains. Just like that, 13-7. A six-point advantage after the extra point was missed following the most recent Dutch Fork TD. And with 141 to go, gentlemen, we're in this thing now. Absolutely. That missed extra point. Remember, Dutch Fork is a freshman kicker. The last guy, Justin Welch, is only a ninth grader. to miss the last extra point. He does it kicking off as well. That could be, Coach mentioned earlier, this could be vital as the game goes down the stretch, the lack of kicking depth, the kicking game for Dutch Fork. I say we're in this thing now. We're settled into this thing now in terms of whatever jitters there might have been about a 5A title, even though these teams know the environment, whatever early things there might have been to work through. Now it's down to football, Coach. Right, and I believe both offenses believe they can move the ball against each other, so it could be a high-scoring game to the end. Return coming. A little bit of space out near side for Sowell and right in front of that Gaffney bench at the 37-yard line. He's out, and that's where Dutch Fork will take over. Well, the streak, Stacy, it's worth an examination for Dutch Fork. This crew having put together 62 consecutive contests without a loss, 61 straight wins against South Carolina opponents, 36th overall since... They ended up being tied 27 all by Mallard Creek from across the state line and 28 consecutive postseason wins yeah, for we- the five-time state champions in a row as they go for six here today. And Patterson going to hand this off. There's green again, appropriately named with the colors he wears. Right, Stacy? Yeah, absolutely. Green and white are the colors there. And he chews up green grass by the mile. We did a game regular season early. He had 181 points, 181 yards, excuse me, and played one quarter and one play. And a game against White, no, that's a game they scored 60 points. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. Here he comes near side. Again, across the 45 to the 46. Gaffney going to stop him short of the marker. Here comes a third down. But let's not just brush by it as 
when we talk about the streak. It is hard to put together that many years in a row unblemished in your home state. It's very difficult to maintain that standard, as Coach Knox alluded to, to keep that level. It's, it's expected now, though, and they have to keep driving these kids hard. And this is what you start every year off with them to get to this game every year. One of the first real third down challenges for Dutch Fork. It comes near midfield, right on that Benedict Tigers logo. Patterson going to keep it. He's got the first down. Plenty more into Gaffney territory at the 46-yard line. So Davin Patterson calls his own number and moves the chains with a Will Lou Gray first down right here around the final half minute of the opening period. And one thing you find late in the season, sometimes coaches open up their running game with the quarterback a little bit more, knowing that the season is coming to a close. A lot of times early in the year, you protect him a little bit more. Now this is for all the marbles. I noticed him covering the ball up into that run. Gaffney's starting to dig at the ball on the last couple of tackles as well. Watch that. It's a Gaffney defense. Known for their 16 interceptions, but also the ability to jar the football loose. Speaking of interceptions, Indians may have just come up with the first turnover of the football game, and they have on cue Landon Bullock with a takeaway for Gaffney. He's had four interceptions this year, and they were trying to hit 82, who I thought was kind of a secret, quiet weapon for Dutch Fork. And he broke underneath the pass to make a great interception. If Dutch Fork sprinted out to a solid start at the beginning of this first quarter, Gaffney closed it down with gusto. Look at Bullock. Bring it in, Stacy. That pass was underthrown, but Bullock did a great job flowing to the football and showing great hands for a defensive player to pull that down. That ball should have been thrown out a little farther out, but you got to give him credit, Bullock, for making a play. He's not, as you mentioned, not opposed to intercepting the football. It's something he's comfortable doing. We saw Dutch Fork with the touchdown, then the takeaway, then the touchdown. Gaffney had the touchdown. Now the takeaway. Let's see what the Indians do with it. Likely to find out the result of this drive in the second quarter as only four ticks remain in the opening period. The Indians going to keep it on the ground, and that will expire the first period. After one, Dutch Fork 13, Gaffney 7. Quickly, your impressions of what we've seen so far, Coach? I don't think the fireworks over yet. I think they're just still warming up, and each team on offense feels like they can move the ball against the other's defense. Quite a quarter, Stacy Huff. A, a lot to see here, 13 to 7, but more coming up. I can't wait. Gaffney Dutch Fork, quite a 5A title game is underway at the state capitol on the first weekend in December. UFS is expanding and looking for self-motivated intermodal trucking agents in your local area. QFS provides best-in-class transportation management systems, insightful analytics, and fully customizable solutions to meet your individual needs. We're fully committed to helping your freight agency grow. If you're interested in taking your earnings to the next level, give us a call or visit us online to learn more about partnering with one of the fastest-growing companies in the industry. Bad things happen sometimes. Fires, floods, hurricanes, broken water pipes, exploding water heaters. It can really, really mess up your home really bad. That's why moms and dads have been calling a &I for over 40 years. 40 years. They get it fixed fast, really fast. My mommy said they made our house a home again. And mommy always tells the truth. a &I Fire and Water Restoration. Restoring more than just your home, restoring your dreams. Dutch Fork High School. 13-7, Dutch Fork leading it, looking for six 
460. And of course, that is a reference to Jack Alcatee, 17 year old, two year offensive line starter for Dutch Fork. You see the family right there in the front row. Of course, passing away August 24th at a night practice. And the season has been dedicated to his memory. You see his locker. So many have poured out their love to this team, to his family. They had a balloon release and a celebration of his life at Foxfield. On the Friday night, they were actually scheduled to play Gaffney, no less. Some said it is fitting this game is happening on the highest stage in his memory. You think about this young man. They're still wearing a helmet sticker, number 60, and still wave that giant 60 flag that you'll see in just a moment. Born December 6, 2003, Jack would have celebrated his 18th birthday on Monday. And boy, so many honors have poured in. And this state, Stacy, has one heart and one mind when it comes to moments like this. We get back to football here, but we are going to dedicate our broadcast tonight as the latest of the tributes to young Jack. Think, think about this, Gaffney put together a drive, a fun drive, and let their thoughts be known. When they went to Nixon Field for the next game at Burns, Burns had signs hanging on the fences. It's been a statewide pouring out of love, and we wanted to say our hearts, our prayers, everyone on our crew still with that family and the Dutch Fork community. Absolutely. We did a regular season game, and they scored 60 on White Nolan and stopped scoring right there. So the scoreboard would say 60 on a real live game. They took the flag over to the mom. It was a touching moment. They took a knee on extra point when they got 60 points. They took a knee and didn't want the extra point. Tom Knox refused the extra point points in that ball game. They stopped the scoreboard at 60. It's a very, one of the most touching moments I've seen in many years doing this. And the mom was right there and it was very emotional for everyone. It's a great scene and I'm glad they got to rally around him and we sorry for the loss and our hearts, hearts thoughts and prayers go out to the Dutch Fork community and his mom. He was posthumously named the homecoming king at the River Bluff game, honored on senior day against Lexington. And again, talk so much about how much love has been poured out for that young man. Had a priceless ride home with his mom. Talked about his future. Wanted to play college football. Had a chance to, to go to PC, perhaps beyond. But uh, he still lives on in the hearts and plays on in the hearts of this Dutch Fork group. Gaffney having a little trouble with Little John trying to get back to the line there. Third down coming. And one more thought to that end, Coach. It's a reminder for everyone that life is fragile. Every breath that we breathe is a gift. And that's why this is about six for 60. The family has said it's brought them such joy to be a part of this run for Dutch Fork. They've talked about how the community rallying around them has helped with the healing process. So much more to high school football than just the final score at the end of the day. It certainly is, because for a lot of these players, this is their last game of football ever, ever organized football. A few may be at the goal, so this is a special moment to try to do it for their teammate. Third down for Gaffney underneath and just again. across the 50 all that is there for smith but we should note smith is right there in the, in the thick of things in which is game. a great sign for gaffney in the game it was a call screen pass and he just tripped up but he remember he limped off gingerly early good to see him back in the ball game may not be 100 percent, but who is at this time of the year and good to see that young man his senior last game with gaffney back in there playing Gaffney, of course, right now mourning the loss of one of their former coaches coming into this week uh, uh, along the way. So this this just a quick reminder that uh, what a thrill it is to be able to do what we do on a night like this. And we dedicate it to all those continuing to battle back. Here's Dutch Fork on the return and a big lick here at the nine yard line. I'm going to go back to it, coach. A physical football game is transpiring tonight and the intensity is only going to rise. And we have another injured player on yes, the field. Yes, we do. They're, they're both getting after it, so it's going to be a battle to the end. Once again, we dedicate this broadcast to Young Jack and the push for number 60 for a little more on that story. Let's check in field side with Natalie. Yeah, guys, I had the opportunity to go stand by his mother, Kelly, before kickoff. And just as I did, all the players on Dutch Fork, they came over to her. They shook his hand, her hand rather, and told her that this game is for Jack. They wish he was, of course, on, them, on the field with them tonight, but they know he is with them in spirit. And also, coaches with the South Carolina Gamecocks, they are here tonight. They presented kelly with a framed usc jersey with his name on the back it really goes to show the love and respect everyone has for this young man and the prayers that continue to pour in the heart of the state the mind of the state the arms of the state still wrapped around that family and this community and again just a reminder he did what he loved do what you love value those you love every breath precious life 
such an incredible gift and uh, certainly Dutch Fork having paid tremendous tribute to number 60 along the way. And our shaken up player up and able to move off here. So Gaffney, uh, the latest good sign, Keyshawn Hemphill. There's another state championship name comes to mind. Yes. Keyshawn Hemphill able to come off under his own power as well. Dutch Fork taking over inside its own 10 yard line up six early stages of the second quarter. Yeah, him be able to deliver that blow on Antonio Williams. Who else catches the front going with that back to the other team inside the 10, but an All-American can do that. Pulled it off, and now Dutch Fork was starting field position in the shadow of their own goal line, goes right quickly back to Antonio Williams. Williams knows how to get open maybe as well as any wide receiver we've seen in recent memory, Coach. He does, and he's got great skills, speed, and their quarterbacks deliver the ball on time with precision. Patterson, who they talk about, is such a great game manager, such a good leader. You know he's a rushing threat as well. He's already proved that in this contest today. But the way he delivers the football, one of the great skills he has brought to the table for Dutch Fork. And here's Green fighting for every inch on second and short. He's near the marker. In fact, the spot. in fact, may have it. It's going to matter where they put the football down here. Clean up, mark him a little bit short. It's going to be third and a credit card. Jason Patterson's credit card was extra large. Is that it was extra long. <laughs> they cut yours a little different, different machine. Eight I, inches. Uh, yeah, yeah, eight I, inches. Yeah. I don't know what you've been watching, <laughs> Stacy. Big money. Stacy giving me a hard time <laughs> trying to keep up with your dressing here department along the here, way. Here, here is a loose Dutch fork playmaker in terms of Jarvis Green down to the 30-yard line. He didn't trust his speed. He should have kept going straight, but he breaks one or two a game, Jason. In a short yardage situation, Coach, a big play emerges and Dutch Fork in business again in the depths of Gaffney territory. Yeah, he came through and broke through an arm tackle and he was off to the races. Then. Right here, I thought he should have trusted his speed. He First down from the 30, and here's the give. And Green has a little bit of trouble. Tripped, tripped up just a bit right in front of the Gaffney defender, and that's J.D. Dowdle who was able to be on the scene there. And even watching some of the earlier games here at the stadium, a lot of the players have been slipping. Yes. I'm not sure if it's a different turf maybe than they're used to, but uh, it's a beautiful facility, but somehow I've noticed other team members yeah. slipping yeah. at and other it, games. And it is turf, Feels and we so. are at a near 70-degree night at about uh, kickoff time maybe tonight. Maybe Just a little uh, maybe a little moisture. of note in early December, something that uh, is very unusual for the Midlands. Here's second down play. It's Green again. And Green able to lunge forward to around the 24-yard line. Green, as we talked about, so good on the counter. And just a junior. And yep. you think about what the ceiling is going to be for Green before all is said and done. He's now at 5'10", 181 pounds as we speak. He's actually it's a third-year starter. He started as a ninth grader. And also an outstanding point guard on the basketball team. And still time to grow. That's the amazing yeah, part of it. Absolutely. Get Third the down for Dutch Fork. Need five with right at seven and a half remaining in the opening half. Going to be Williams. Williams got the first down, and he's got a bit of a seam to inside the 15. Now a flag comes in it's, it's, the it's, very end of this. It's going to be interesting if it's a late hold on a blocker up, upfield, yeah. or is it a face mask at the end of the run? But it was interesting, the timing of that flag. Yeah. From in behind the play. Yeah, he was past the – they're going to walk it back against Dutch Ford, but he was past the sticks at the time the flag came out. So whatever it was was unnecessary. Probably they, the, looks like the tight end who went – maybe it was a lead blocker could be holding. Holding on the offense. So 25-yard line where things are set up here for Dutch Ford. Negates the third down conversion for the Foxes. And the Gaffney defense will have one more crack at forcing a fourth. And obviously, you know where you're at, four down territory. Certainly with the kicking approach for Dutch Fork, you're going to see a couple of cracks at it for the Foxes right here, right now, if needed. Up top, and a fourth down try will be coming as this is incomplete. Well, you think about a year ago and how tough it was to fill the stadiums up. You listen to the environment that we find ourselves in tonight and look below. This is quite a return to state championship feel for the state of South Carolina as we get set for this fourth down. Just a great night and a full house on both sides. Great atmosphere for football. And I say that because you're going to hear them on plays just like this. Fourth down and five. Everybody's up. They will call time seven out and, and talk change about it. remaining, and they'll have to wait a little longer. You called it because you knew it was coming. 
will take the timeout as well. Gaffney having pulled within a touchdown. Dutch Fork up six, driving four more. But a big fourth down awaits on the other side of the break. Well, the highlights, it's going to be a hard one to build for the folks in the truck because we've got <laughs> highlight performances all over this first half and still seven and change remaining. But you'll want to stick around for the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control halftime report. Along with those highlights, interviews with South Carolina High School League personnel. What a privilege to partner with them once again for Sinclair and bring these championships to you. Find out more about SCDHEC at scdheck.gov slash COVID-19. Be educated. Make sure you all stay safe out there as we head into the holidays. Fourth down Dutch Fort at the 25-yard line of the Gaffney Indians in the 5A state title game. Patterson calling for the football. He has a man in motion coming near side. And Dutch Fort going up top, not thinking about the first down, but a whole lot more. And it's broken up when all is said and done by Caliber Huey in the secondary. He had Jarvis Green wide open for the first down, and Green is letting him know it. He had Green could have got 10. He and went I, for everything. I go back to they went for a whole lot more than just the yardage needed. Didn't pay off, and the Indians come away with a turnover on downs in the depths of their own territory, Coach. Yes, that's, that could give them a little momentum here right before the half. And uh, again, yep. the back was open on the flare rattle here. He just didn't he didn't get it to him. He wanted to get the big one. Well, again, it was, it was Caliber Huey who ended up putting a, a hand on it. Caliber Huey, the man on the scene I for the Gaffney Indians. I love that name. Say it again, Jason. Caliber Huey and Stacy Huff over there loving it. What do you tell me? <laughs> Huff like tough. Huff like tough. You got to be it. tough in this 5A championship game tonight. How about this catch? That shoulder throw. Tossed complete. to Jaden Tate, a senior wide receiver for Gaffney. Reels it in. Move the chains. 6.52 left to play. We have some drama. That's a QFS transportation first down. By the way, if you haven't yet, check out QFS transportation. Empowering our drivers and trucking agents to succeed. The number one priority at QFS transportation. You know what the number one priority for the Dutch Fork community, for the Gaffney community is? That's why they're here in terms of football. And the Indians try to go on the march here. First down and 10 from their own 38 at the six and a half minute mark, down by six. Rushed out, near side is Loftus. Loftus, again, we said it earlier, doesn't run a lot, can make something out of nothing when he needs to, and he gets about half the yardage Gaffney needed on this little scamper. Well, they're gonna give him six on yeah, that. Yeah, it's gonna get a little more than half of Seven, and that's gonna be second and three. Offensive coordinators love second and short. Am I right, coach? A lot of good plays in there. Not <laughs> second 13, you have to scratch your head a lot. Yeah, this one will open up the playbook for you. Absolutely. That's right. You can throw here or you can take, run the ball. Ball resting on the near hash 45-yard line of Gaffney. Indians looking over to the sideline for that play call from this Gaffney staff. Loftus. Just going to get rid of this. Air mails it behind the Gaffney bench. They played coverage that time. They, they sent no one. They bluffed the blitz with Wicker and Perry, and they backed off and played coverage. I think they feel like they can cover the receivers, but they haven't put a lot of pressure in on either of these last couple of pass plays. They just played coverage football. Third down coming for Gaffney. The Indians need the 48. They actually need to get just past the 48 in order to move the chains once again. Now slowly up to the line. 
He's got Tyler Smith off that left hip. Smith near side, but Loftus looking the other way. And that's going to be near the sticks. We'll see how much progress Jadarius Littlejohn was able to get falling forward. Looks like enough. He's got just enough. Living just enough for the city. The Stevie Wonder reference right there for the old heads. <laughs> just enough. And it is. You are correct, Stacey Huff, a first down. <laughs> Eddie's having fun with that. Co Absolutely. Coach Muldrow's with you. When he said old heads, that, 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 that named me. <laughs> <laughs> Not these other two young bucks. He's just here. well seasoned, well seasoned in here. There you go. That's right. Experience, wisdom. That's why we've got you here. First down 10 for the Indians. Just shy midfield. Gaffney to the ground. And across the 45 to the 43 yard line. Yep. And that's where Smith is tripped up. You know, a bit surprising when you look at Gaffney's numbers, coach. You think about them as a rushing team because of the two 1,000 yard backs. But when you really look at the stat sheet, this is a team that is more balanced than they would appear at first glance. That's what surprised me when I went and watched them. They're, they're, and their quarterback is so accurate, just like Dutch Ford. So they get the ball to the right people in the right spots. 2,847 yards rushing, 2,176 yards passing for the Indians along the way. 72 total touchdowns for this crew, having made the 118-mile trip down from the home they affectionately call the reservation there in Gaffney, South Carolina. And timeout going to be called by these Indians with 527 to play. And Stacy presents more of a challenge than win, perhaps early on one-dimensional. Now that you know, you have to to make sure you're prepared for Grayson Loftus to go to the skies, something he's already done effectively in this game. Yeah, he's shown you a little bit of everything. He ran a couple of times earlier with not a lot of success, but the last run he had set up was second and short, and they're now gashing Dutch Fork on first down. I mean, they're getting too much on first down, and Dutch Fork is on roller skates right now. The timeout was by Gaffney, but I think Dutch Fork can use it as well. Two backs averaging seven plus per carry. Smith was 7.7, .7, Little John was 7.1. So as Gaffney's offense goes to work here, after talking so much about the weapons on Dutch Fork's side of things offensively, there are a number of places Dan Jones and his staff can look to make hay as well, Coach. Sure can, and uh, Edward Jeffries, number one, the wide receiver, has kind of come in and out of the game. Looks like he's banged up a little bit, but he's their big play man. And so uh, both offenses feel comfortable with what they're doing, so I don't think they're going to back away the rest of the night. It's a big play right here early. Second down and short. You said it's so much open right here on second and one in Dutch Fork territory for Gaffney. On the snap to Smith. He's across the 35 to the 34. Gaffney secures the first down and then some, and the march continues for the crew back in black in this 5A state championship. They went wildcat that time to the All-State. Tyler Smith, Navy offer among others. They'll definitely be playing on Saturday, but a direct snap and well done. Both these teams will, will use a little bit of wildcat along the way, and why not when you think of the weapons they have and the number of different individuals who can be strong out of the backfield. Loftus going to call for motion from Little John on the far side and a little bit of movement near side it, it, before the play. Left guard may have moved. Yep. Dutch Fork thought there was movement before the one that was called. They thought they, they were pointing before the, the, the flag came out. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. Tommy Brush telling you that Gaffney's going to back up about five after the motion on the near side. The reverse skate there, Jason Patterson. Yep, head in the other direction. Gaffney now facing a first down and 15. Leading the 24-yard line. Saw the vitals on Loftus there. He works with the combo of Smith and Little John. Off to the left and right, respectively, with Gaffney just beyond the left hash. Calling for the football now is Loftus. A little bit of miscommunication in terms of the snap there for Gaffney. And you can see as Dutch Fork uh, again will continue to watch as Gaffney goes the other way. Dutch Fork is getting life on us. Ball start. Well, you saw Loftus desperately calling for the football on the snap that time. Uh, the center was the only one that didn't get the communication somehow. Everybody else was ready to go. So Gaffney now in first and 20. All that momentum the Indians had gathered up stalled as Loftus will await the snap from the 50-yard line now right at the base of that Benedict Tigers logo here at Charlie W. Johnson Stadium at Benedict College. 
Boy, he thought about loading it up and really firing away. Instead, he's going to get about half of it back just beyond the original line of scrimmage before the two penalties in the connection with Javarius Littlejohn. Did a check down that time. Smart play that time. Take, get some of it back. Well covered on the back end by Dutch Ford. They had the deep routes covered. But good smart, good smart play by the junior Loftus. And you can certainly see his arm strength there. It was a pass all the way across the field. And he, he threw it on a rope. Four and a half minutes. A lot of time left in this second quarter. For a Gaffney team trailing by six. We're down at 1.13 in this contest. Here comes the pressure. Just able to get rid of it. And down to the 31-yard line as he uses a toss to get Tyler Smith involved this time. Going to be third down when it all sorts out and about six for the Gaffney Indians. At least there's a replay right here. Good fake the little John. You have to honor that. And he hasn't got a lot of pressure lately, but there it is. Richardson gave him a little heat at the end of that play right there. So third down Gaffney again. Indians needing the 24. Order to move the chains here on third. Solid kicker for Gaffney and A.J. Haynes, who's 9 of 15 on field goals this year, maybe slightly out of his range. We'll see as this is incomplete. Contested as the Indians worked near side boundary in an attempt to connect with Deshaun Corey. Corey, who has a couple of touchdowns with 27 catches for over 440 yards on the season. Had a long one this year, 90, one of the memorable plays for the Indians, but he cannot reel it in here. Fourth down, and the offense staying out there, Coach. Yeah, they, they're still in uh, good position here. They've got time. they got timeouts. They might want to, if they're not sure about the defensive look here, they can call timeout and set up something else. Gaffney converted a fourth and short in the early stages of the game. Timeout being called for here with 4.06 to play on what amounts to a fourth and six for Gaffney. The Indians, we, we talked about their history, Stacy State championships dating back to 1927. 27, 28, 29, 31, 34, 1960. The 61 championship we talked about, that was the split title that serves as the 17th overall when you add them up for Gaffney. 63, 64, 65, 85, then Dan Jones came on staff in 92. They won it in 92. Kentrell Jones and company in 97. 03, 05, 06, those great Phil Strickland teams. And then the last time these two teams played, Dutch Fork and Gaffney, the 2012 championship, those the 17 titles claimed by the Gaffney Indians all time. I want to talk about the 92 team. I'm talking to Coach Jones the year he got there. There are 16 players on this team right here that have uncles or fathers or close relatives that were on the 92 team. Eight with dads. So eight with dads. 16 of these players, and it's fascinating the pressure or the encouragement, if you will, they get from the hometown to bring that trophy back. Including Tyler Smith and his brother Trey Smith, who plays defense. Their dad caught a touchdown pass Absolutely. in the state championship good, game. Good heredity. Fourth down for this storied Gaffney program. Indians needing the 25. They're not going to get it. Not even close. There is a flag. They're going to get bailed out with a face mask. As C.J. Wicker, who was the vocal leader of this D, he's the sax leader of this D, and he came up with a play that you said it is probably going to be negated by the yellow hanky unless this goes against Gaffney on the holding side. Let's await the final word from Tommy Brush. That's for the holding. It, yes. it is. On the offense. I thought they built him out at, at the end of it with a holding, but... So it is the pressure from C.J. Wicker and company that makes all the difference. They turned them loose that time. There was a pass down. That's what I was going to say earlier. Those penalties put Dutch Fork in a position where they could let those linemen and, and let those dogs hunt. And Wicker came through like nobody really put a pad on him, but you got to block that kid. So Dutch Fork takes over. Of course, we talk about the storied history between these programs. You know what Dutch Fork has done of late. And Tommy Knott squad back to work near midfield. Pass to Green in the backfield. Green with a seam. He's into Gaffney territory at the 41-yard line. Move the chains. That is the latest of the QFS transportation first downs. Here come the Foxes. Again, 82 was a lead blocker for them. They use their tight ends well to, to help spring some plays on the corner. Yeah, Coach Knotts also Coach Knotts, who we should mention it 
you know, we, we talk about the dynasty he's built here. Earlier in the year, in the early stages of the year, Coach Knotts, who's now 65, had a bit of a heart rhythm issue. They had to shock his heart back into rhythm. He said, it sounds a lot worse than it was. That's what he passed <laughs> along to us. And he was on the sideline that Friday night after all. Assistant Doug Rivers was ready to go at the ready if needed. They jointly called the first half, and he was right in his usual spot. He's been there ever since the rest of the way. Good to see him healthy, continuing to make his mark on South Carolina. Across the 30 to the 29, that's going to move the chains. And they ended up, Stacy, with a 56-25 win when all was said and done that particular week when he spent a little bit of time away. But he said he loves this, and he loves the process, and he loves where he is with this Dutch Fork program year in, year out. Seems to be happy with it. Over C- continuing to pull it together. And here's Williams. He's inside the 20 to the 21. And that's near another QFS first down for Dutch Fork. But I love what he said to us. He said, I do spend the holidays celebrating these championships. As you see, another one of the great playmakers that have helped lead yeah. he and the Foxes to this type of spot. He said, and by January 3rd or 4th, <laughs> we get <laughs> back on planning for the next one. Yeah, he's. Yeah, I talked to one of his assistants earlier in the year. It's like this guy. I mean, think about him is in July, when everybody's thinking about whatever, he, from July, whatever, he's always thinking about a championship, not just getting back to football. He's thinking about this Saturday right here and trying to get here. Took out T.L. Hanna a year ago, a couple of titles against Dorman with T.L. Hanna sandwiched in between in 2019 and 18, working backwards. They defeated Bowling Springs in 17. And, of course, had the title just prior to that. Those are simply the five reeled off in a row trying to make it six, but seven overall all in the last decade in which he's built this group into a power. First down in the red zone. Patterson rolls this way, and that is going to be incomplete. Didn't quite make it to his intended target. He had two men open. He had a t- he had 82 open, and he had Williams open. And this time he threw the shorter pass, but he had three options on that play and just didn't get enough arm on it. And he's, he's been a little bit out of rhythm throwing the ball early in this ball game. So it's going to be the 17-yard line, second down for Dutch Fork. Trying to reestablish that two-score advantage that the defending, the five-time reigning champions held a little bit earlier tonight. And it's going to be the heart of that Gaffney defense. Enough of those trademark black jerseys there to stack up the ball carrier at the 15. Third down coming. There's some passing down. They got to trust down, uh, Patterson to go ahead and get the ball to the right guy and make a throw right here. They're going to put it in his hands, I do believe. And Antonio Williams might factor being here, Jason. Third down coming. And the line to make is the seven-yard line for Dutch Fork. They could secure a first and goal there if so desired. Afney's four down front. It's a reverse. Then it's going to be tossed back to Patterson. And he is just nicked by the Gaffney pursuit, and it is enough to trip up the quarterback, and Gaffney able to get Jeriel Jeffries in there, one of the 10th graders, to make the stop. They showed a good trick play right there. They showed it, and to get no gain or loss on the play. Does the turf monster got him? Well, you wonder. Jeffries was right there. You could tell if maybe he got a little bit of a hand on it, but you said it. The footing not there, and fourth down is coming now. So timeout, Gaffney ahead of the fourth down play. They don't quite quite trust the kicking game, I believe. Otherwise, they would probably say take the three points and be, just get a sure three points. That evidence. 13-7 is the Dutch Fork lead. Fox is in position for more with 97 seconds remaining in the opening half of the 5A title game. Christmas. Hurry, they're going to be up soon. When families and communities come together in the spirit of peace on earth and goodwill towards men. Operation Saturday Night and Still on the Fence. Okay, we're ready. At Ingalls, we know that Christmas isn't just a holiday. It's a feeling to embrace all year long. Ingalls, your neighbor for over 50 years.
Well, you want to stick around at the conclusion of tonight's game for the QFS Transportation Drive of the Game. Learn more about partnering with one of the fastest growing companies in the industry. Go to QFSTransportation.com today. 13-7, the lead for Dutch Fork. Another fourth down in Gaffney territory. Now, the last time we had this scenario, Coach, Gaffney able to come away with the turnover on downs. Here's another chance for Dutch Fork to create a little separation. Key, key for uh, Gaffney's defense now is to get this stop. If they give up a touchdown right before half, the momentum they perhaps gained in the second quarter is all lost. Now look at the masterminds on both sidelines as a chess match ensues. Dutch Fork really dialing one up on the third down play that was not to be. And it's fourth and 12. Again, the seven yard line. What is needed for Dutch Fork are, of course, seven if they can put it in the end zone beyond that. Boxes route out near the boundary far side. That's incomplete. And Gaffney for a second trip into the depths of Indian territory for Dutch Fork has stiffened its neck and turned the champs away. Coach not, is not happy with his quarterback. Met him at, met him at the, the, the numbers right there. Give him some instruction. They're still talking. So with 91 seconds remaining in the opening half, it's Indian football. And the Gaffney fans getting into it. Those who are well represented, as they always are all around the state, having made the trip 118 yes, miles to the south, to the state capitol on this day, and all smiles after what their defense was able to put together there. And now the offense taking over at the 19-yard line. On the ground. That doesn't simply mean run it out when Gaffney goes to the ground. True for both these teams, and Smith is able to move the chains. That's another QFS transportation first down up across the 30. The more they march, Coach, the more Gaffney will think about taking this final minute for a spin. Yeah, they're, they're looking to try to speed up. They've been kind of deliberate trying to milk the clock, but now they feel like if they get to the 50, they might try to throw something deep. Smith again. Put his foot in the ground, but ran into a host a flag of Dutch Fork Silver Foxes. A flag thrown right into the pile there. One of us a face mask, but he lost his footing a little bit right at impact as he well. Did. A lot of people's feet are giving way right when they try to make those hard cuts. And it's been one of the themes of the whole weekend. You and know, we've has. called a number of the games yes. down here this weekend, yes. and it's something we've seen across all classifications. Personal foul, face mask. That's, that's the big joker, as they say in spades. That's the big joker, 15 yards. And now you're all of a sudden, Coach, at midfield if you're Gaffney. With a minute. With a minute, two remaining. Now the timeout's having been used by the Indians in this first half, so they cannot stop the clock, barring the minimal stoppage that you get after a first down or being able to get out of bounds. But a minute and separated from the end zone right now by 54 yards. Also have the talented kicker, A.J. Haynes. Can they get in his range? Near side. 50 across it to the 48, and that's where Smith is out of bounds. That's going to definitely put him in position with 46 seconds, even though with no timeouts. Remember, first down stops the clock in high school and college football, so they have plenty of time, plenty of snaps ahead. Dutch Fork has the ball up right here, but Gaffney looking to close the half with the dagger. 46 on the game clock. And it's Grayson Loftus and the Indians. Would be looking to either cut the gap or take their first lead, depending upon how this drive ends. And that's incomplete, intended for Jeffries. He had that great route and catch a little bit earlier for Gaffney. After for the seven on the board for the Indians. 42 seconds now remain ahead of now a third down play coming for Gaffney. Third and short. This is one of those weird moments you get toward the end of the half. It's third and short. Can't stop the clock. You're just going to get the stoppage if you get the first momentarily with 42 seconds to play if you're gaffing. If you run it, you got to spike it. Absolutely. A little toss to Smith. He's got the first down. So they will get the pause button as they reset the chains with 35 seconds to play. Now in Dutch Fork territory at the 36. Clock will restart once they set the chains. It already has. 31 and downward on the game clock in the second quarter. Loftus, boy, he was looking deep. 
had to elude a tackler in the backfield and falling that, down. That's going to be tough. Yeah, you yeah, know, the design was to get him yeah. out of bounds, but he lost his footing. And it wasn't a first down. So and they it's got down to 12. It's close to a first down, but it's about a yard short. They got to spike this, or maybe they don't. Indians with nine seconds, and it will be spiked by Grayson Loftus. Six on the clock. Well, <laughs> there's where that footing comes into play that yes. we've seen throughout this first Absolutely. half on both sides because that was going to be a play in which he was able to secure the catch, probably work his way beyond the marker and get out of bounds even. Didn't happen when he slipped up. Right, and end up losing maybe, what, 10 to 15 seconds because of yeah. that, not being able to get up. You got, you got to decide to kick it. You got to kick it now. Go for it. There's one play left in the half. Either it's going to be a field goal or you go for the end zone. Because no Gaffney timeouts no remain. Gaffney. So they decide not, they're going to issue the field goal. Look at me using a big word, Jason. I am impressed. Thank you. Stacey Stacey Hall. Hall. All, I'm trying to meet you in person. On guy. so many levels. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Six seconds for the Gaffney Indians. Looking for, and look it would who, seem now the lead. Look who's at safety. At the end of the half, and it is picked. Williams. <laughs> Didn't get that deep into the Dutch yeah. Fork defense. It is a second pick for Dutch Fork, and it's Chandler Perry, one of the solid leaders for the Silver Foxes. There's a flag down at the 14. And they're going to say he taunted, it, but he got up and ran the football to another referee. They may have to pick that one up. They threw a flag. They're going to say one referee might have thought it was taunting, but he ran the hand of the referee to the ball to another referee across the field. And time ran out on the half, and both of the teams are headed to the locker room. If it's a defensive penalty, yeah, another play. it's one untimed play. That's a great point. But, but they have to talk but about they, this one. But it, Excuse me. But it could have been it was after the clock had run out, so it may be assessed the second half. I don't know exactly. And the that. interception by Dutch Fork. But that's, they, got, they may have to talk about this because one thought he was taunting, but he ran it and handed the ball to another referee. That's not taunting. Well, you see both we coaches. Ball. Here comes the call. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the defense. It will be forced on the second half kickoff. Thought maybe it would be enforced on the second half kickoff. That's the case. Both coaches turned and said to their teams, you're headed to the locker room. That was the indicator the first half was done. So they're going to enforce the taunting penalty, the unsportsmanlike, on the backside and uh, the kickoff coming in the second half. Well, let's take a moment and review this first half. Dutch Fork out to a 13-0 advantage right away, Coach. A tremendous start for Dutch Fork. And they probably felt then that they were going to probably score 45, 60 points, whatever. Uh, but Gaffney responded. Gaffney drove down the field, got stopped inside the 10, and I think scored on their second or third possession. So they gained confidence on offense too. Stacy, Indians made it clear in that second quarter they came to play. They find themselves down just six points headed to the intermission. They were physical the entire ball game, so the fight was going to be the anyway. They found some big plays and they disrupted Dutch Fork offense and clicked on their own a little bit. I think we're set up for an outstanding, maybe an instant classic second half. And remember, Gaffney gets the football in the second half, and there's going to be a that penalty, penalty, penalty assessed, which probably means pretty good field position for the Indians. And, and they're looking to drive to tie or take and or take the lead with that possession. Well, let's check in and get the thoughts of head coach Tommy Knotts, who is with Natalie. Coach, you knew this was one was going to be a dog fight today. Yeah. How can you say or what can you say about the way your guys handled themselves in the first half? Well, I think we handled ourselves all right. We made some big plays on both sides of the ball, but we got to be consistent. I mean, they're a great football team. If we play inconsistently, we get penalties like we just got. That's just sheer stupidity I, I don't understand it but uh it's a good football game you know even, even though it's a little bit sloppy on on our side uh so it should be an interesting second half you knew that gaffney was going to put up a fight defensively oh, yeah. you said they were going to be the toughest team you faced yeah. all year what can you say about how they're competing oh they're tough they're athletic they're mean uh they play the game like like, like i like my defensive people to play so uh hats off to gaffney but uh, we did some really good things against them. Uh, we had them on their heels a couple times. My quarterback's just got to make some good decisions and, you know, make some consistent plays. That help us. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, Coach. Good luck. Rarely do you have to wonder what he's thinking. We thank Coach Knotts. And, of course, we'll hear from Coach Dan Jones coming out of the locker room. We appreciate both coaches spending time with us. What a first half. Dutch Fork looking for six straight. Ran out to a 13-0 lead. But we've got a one-possession contest at the break. Christmas. Hurry, they're going to be up soon. When families and communities come together in the spirit of peace on earth and goodwill towards men. Operation Silent Night and Stone Effect. Okay, we're ready. At Ingalls, we know that Christmas isn't just a holiday. Merry it's a feeling to embrace all year long. Ingalls, your neighbor for over 50 years.
in our In South, in South, hey everybody. This is Friday Night Rivals. I'm Nelson Weston, and like all of y'all, I'm ready for some good old-fashioned state championship high school football, baby. And who better to join us than our good friend from Ingalls Markets, Melissa Level. Melissa, are you excited about the game? I'm excited about the game. What a great season it's been for both of the teams, and we're going to find out who the best of the best is. Indeed we are. Now, speaking of high school championships, can you share with us the significance of Ingalls supporting high school athletics? Well, supporting high school athletics is part of an overall plan of supporting high school education or education in general. Children are our future, they're our culture, we're looking forward to following them through that journey. So athletics is just a very big part of our community. People love high school football and they love our kids. So good place for Ingalls to be. Absolutely. And speaking of Ingalls, you and I both know that Ingalls is undoubtedly the place you want to shop for all your delicious mouth-watering tailgating specials. Absolutely. What all can we expect in these specials? What kind of food are we talking about? We can keep it simple. You can go right to the wing bar mm -hmm. and pick up a, a set of wonderful wings, all sorts of different mm -hmm. flavors, a great big salad. Or you can go to the deli and get a wonderful fresh made sub with boar's head meat. Or you can just get a little creative and go back and get the best meat of town, grill up a steak, mm -hmm. get yourself a salad from the fresh produce and the deli and a little bit of a baked potato on the side. A steak and a salad and a baked potato on the side. That would definitely oh, hit the spot yeah, right about now. Definitely, wouldn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. I'll see you there. Of course. You and I both know that uh, when it comes to the Tools for Schools program, it is very impactful in the community. For those who may be unfamiliar, can you share with us an overview of Tools for Schools? And more importantly, can you also share with us how does somebody get involved with it? Uh, Tools for School is a partnership between Ingalls, our customers, and our, our school community. Mm -hmm. It's through the Ingalls Advantage card. Every time you shop at Ingalls and use your Ingalls Advantage card, if you register with the school of your choice, you are going to be donating to that school. Teachers then can buy supplies, big or small, all the way down from pencils, all the way up to air conditioning systems, uh, band uniforms, all sorts of wonderful things. It keeps the teachers' money in their own pocket and allows them to stock the school supplies with what they need. That's terrific. Melissa, keep up the great work. Thank you. All right. Let's get her done. Let's get her done indeed. Folks, this is Friday Night Rivals, and now time is the championship football. Let's get it. We welcome you back to the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control Halftime Report. And we certainly are glad to have you with us in the 5A title game, 13-7, the Dutch Fork Lead. Reminder, visit scdhec.gov slash COVID-19. You want to stay educated, stay safe across the course of this holiday season coming up all across the Palmetto State. And a pleasure to welcome you back in the booth here in the state capitol. And what a phenomenal first half of football between the two standards. We kind of build this as the historic power in South Carolina against the newly installed standard, the team everybody's chasing in the state, and it has lived up to that hype, Coach. 
It sure has. Both offenses have been explosive. Both of them have had some turnovers, maybe unexpected, but uh, both of them have good defensive teams, so you expect that in a game like this. Stacy, it has been everything you could want out of a 5A state championship thus far. It's a heavyweight matchup. We came, it's the finale of everything, and it's really coming down to, I think, two quarters of outstanding football, a lot of talent on the field, and I think it's an instant classic booing right here tonight. Images to come for you from that first half. Stick around. Highlights are coming up. But first, let's take a look at some of the key numbers for Dutch Fork, 168 rushing, 118 passing. Gaffney's done its work through the air thus far, 174 through the air to 65 on the ground, Stacy. Yeah, and that's kind of a little bit of a surprise considering the 1,000-yard backs they came in here with, but they hit a couple of big plays up top, and they caught Dutch Fork sleeping a little bit, and adjustments will be made at halftime. We'll see how teams come out and adjust to those stats that we're looking at right now. Coach, it was a fast start for Dutch Fork as we began to look at the first half highlights, wasting no time. Patterson used the fake. This was the first of two touchdown runs for the Dutch Fork QB. Yes, they probably opened him up. There's a, a lot of more read plays, but he kept the ball. The defensive end was closing. And That's when Gaffney was going for it on the fourth down, trying to put it into the end zone. Our third down deep in that series. Here's Patterson on his second run, Stacey. And that's, we talked about it in the pregame, that he's dangerous with his legs as well, opening up for that. And, Coach, look at this play. This big Dickman they caught him sleeping on. Well, they, they did. They, they they worked on this play at practice that, where they were trying to split the safeties, and they did on that on that particular pass. Familiar state championship type name. Jeffries with the touchdown for Gaffney, and then the Gaffney defense. A couple of key stops when it counted, Coach. They did. Uh, uh, they both of them have excellent defensive teams. They probably get more recognition for what their offense does, but both of them are very strong defensive teams. And as well. that was the Dutch Fork stop to end the half and keep the six-point lead in effect. Standing by with Gaffney head coach Dan Jones. Here's Natalie. of action between Dutch Fork and Gaffney. Everything you'd want out of the title game thus far. In South Carolina, providing safe environments for our community starts with education. As leaders in education and research in South Carolina, it's our duty to educate and inform our students, staff, and communities. As we continue to struggle with COVID-19, we encourage everyone who has yet to be vaccinated to be vaccinated now. The research is proven COVID-19 vaccines are safe and effective. Make an informed decision for yourself and for those you love. Visit scdhack.gov. The Dutch Fork Silver Foxes made state history last year with a fifth straight title. 
The push all season long has been six for 60. Dutch Fork leading at 13-7 in that pursuit at the half. Coach Knox back out on the field with his team getting ready for the kickoff. Now this kickoff after the penalty which ended the half assist to Dutch Fork is going to take place from the 25-yard line. So you would expect, especially with the young kicker, Gaffney's going to have some pretty good field position here to get things started, Coach. They should. Uh, you know, again, they probably haven't seen him quite as much. Uh, even though Dutch Fork scores a lot, I'm not sure how much he's kicked this year. I think maybe only perhaps the last two games. Uh, so again, important to note, this kick after the penalty to end the half coming from the 25-yard line. Gaffney's return team, including Smith, who is near side, back at the 25-yard line on the other side. And here's our Johns RV cells opening kickoff of the third period, and that's going to work out well, well, until it worked out of bounds. So it looked like that was going to go on back toward that end zone, but it took a hop across and it's going to be another penalty as Gaffney will have decent field position to get things started. Natalie caught up with Dan Jones coming out of the locker room. What did Coach Jones have to say for Gaffney, Natalie? Yeah, guys, overall he said he's pleased with the way his guys handled and took care of business the first half. He was actually asked earlier this week, was it destiny that these two teams would meet right here in the finals? And I have a feeling he is not a superstitious guy because he said, look, blankly, Dutch Fork has been here five out of the six last championship. So there was pretty good odds that they would see each other down the stretch. But the question was, could Gaffney get here? He said, yes, they are answering the call tonight and hanging with this team. It should be an interesting second half, guys. Well, you know the environment is not going to be too big for the Gaffney Indians based upon what's happened here. And already a decision to make for Coach Jones. They're going to force Dutch Fork to kick this again. The rules probably have changed over the years, but it used to be uh, when it went out of bounds there. 35-yard line. 35 35-yard line, yeah. so they were back on the yeah, uh, back on the 25, so it should have been the Gaffney's ball on the 50 that had taken that option. So I think they feel like they can return it past the 50 unless the rule has changed over the years. Yeah, again, that's a, a lot of curious Again, decision. an early decision already being made coming out of the locker room, and Gaffney going to try to make use of this return. And here's Dowdle. And he gets it across that 50-yard line. Not by much, up to around the 47. Well, these were our keys to the game. Brought to you by Ingalls. Low prices, love the saving. Our food for thought. I'll ask you, Stacy, in terms of Gaffney, how do you assess their impact in terms of keys? Well, they came before the party. Right now, they're in the party's uh, sporting atmosphere. They brought the crowd direct to party. A party crashing uh, crowd they brought up from Gaffney. The whole town is here. And they, they came in like a lamb trying to leave like a lion. Yeah, this and this ball guy trying to pull the upset. Gaffney South right now, that's for sure, when you look at this crowd. Coach, how about the Dutch Fork keys to this point? Uh, I think they need to be a little bit more consistent on offense. The quarterback is just a little bit off. But, uh, again, they have the weapons to prove that they can continue to score. Those are potential adjustments. Here's Gaffney's tone-setting drive of the third quarter. And, as you might expect, they're going to quickly turn, hand it to Tyler Smith. Looks no worse for the wear after being a little shaken up early in the game. Tyler Smith carries this for nine on the first down play, and it's going to be second down and short for Gaffney. Again, average is right at eight per carry, does Smith. One of the great reasons the Indians have made their way here. Trips to the near side for Gaffney in this set, but it's still Smith right off that left hip. And deciding to tuck it is Loftus. He feigned to pass out near side and picked up the first down, has Gaffney knocking on the door of the red zone. Too easy, too comfortable for him right there. Take a look. There's nothing but green grass on his left side over here. And he had a chance to just went over to. They caught him with the, the read pass, run pass option, and they went with the fake. And just an easy first down for Loftus. Both these teams handling this championship environment confident. We talked about it. No way this stage is too big for a team with 17 state championships. The pride and tradition that Gaffney brings to the table. Books have been written about it. The longtime cover guy for Gaffney, editor. Cherokee Chronicle, Tommy Martin, writing a great book about the history of this program, chronicling it year by year. Dutch Fork having reeled off titles, now to the tune of five in a row, six total in South Carolina, and looking for number 14 overall in both Carolinas. Tommy Knott's on the other side. These are two programs. Man, you get to this point, they know, Stacy, exactly what it takes to close the deal in the second half. Without a question, you look at the sidelines over there. They are prepared for this. This moment is not too big for either team. Tradition and current dynasty uh, all on the line right here. I'm happy to have all of you who are in our audience tonight enjoying this 5A title game. And uh, we're, we're buckled in for what we hope is going to be just a thrilling, thrilling finish between these two teams. 
they're getting too much yards on first down. It's too, it's too many, uh, too many y get yards picked up by, on first down by Gaffney. They, they get Gaffney's getting too many yards. Eight, 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 nine yards. Yeah, Gaffney's getting too many yards. Man. Gotcha, gotcha. The Indians find themselves at the 17-yard line of Dutch Fork, <laughs> I mean, and here comes. A third down and one. So many tight third and fourth downs going on here as it goes to 10-15. And here's a little toss in the direction of Smith once again. And boy, is that red. How about the play as he does so often stepping up by Richardson. Stacy, you talked about Richardson earlier, and he comes up in a key moment for Dutch Fork. A senior captain of his team making big plays right here. And again, they and again the team with the ball. They, they the they, team they, with the ball. They, 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 hey, how about, they, how about they Richardson? The ball. Eighteen tackles for loss, seven sacks along the way this season, and he's forced a fourth down here. Coach, big play coming up. Yes, I, I was kind of a little surprised when it's third and one. They tried a little swing pass, but I guess they felt they would get pressure from inside. All right, nine and a half to go. Third period, opening drive for Gaffney after the penalty. Gave great field position to the Indians at the end of the half. The defense for Dutch Fork just as great. Javon Mack, he had 10 tackles on the year. One pass broken up in limited action. Played in just six games this season. But he has a state championship moment and a fourth down stop for Dutch Fork. Only a junior. Good programs don't graduate. They keep young players in the hopper. He's an outstanding underclass. Defensive back, look for him a big senior year next year, Mojo. All right, first down from the 22-yard line for Dutch Fork. So keep those in the back of your mind. A couple of times, Gaffney turned Dutch Fork over on downs. Silver Foxes returned the favor in the third quarter when Gaffney had a little momentum to start the period. And now here comes Patterson once again up across the 23 to the 24-yard line. And that's where the Gaffney defense will meet him. One of the first on the scene for Gaffney this time around. Caliber Huey, who had that big defensive play a little bit earlier in the contest. All right, let's talk adjustments. We talked keys just a little bit ago. What do you see as the necessary adjustments for this Dutch Fork squad, Coach? Well, they need to be a little bit sharper on their passing game. They've, they've got some open guys and just barely missing some receivers. I'm not sure if he's feeling a little bit more pressure, but he's not quite as sharp as, as Stacy mentioned earlier. That's a great point. Hey, Stacy, how about for the, uh, let's listen to the call here. Dead ball, thump start on the offense. A self-inflicted penalty going to back them up just a little bit. How about the Gaffney Indians, adjustment-wise? If you could crawl into the mind of Dan Jones momentarily, what do you think he talked to his team about at the half? Well, one thing I think taking advantage of opportunity. They, they created opportunities for themselves with only seven points to show for it. Both teams can say that, but Coach Jones definitely, you're going to put an upset, you can't miss any opportunities. Eight and a half to go in his third period. And a big run up across the 30. That's first down yardage, it would seem, for Jarvis Green. Gets up slowly. A little bit slow to get up. Now, remember, Green scored the two touchdowns to put Dutch Fork up 14-0. Had a three-yard run and a 74-yard reception last week. But he had a knee injury late in that first half, was limited in the second half. That's the first time we've seen any potential lingering effects, Stacy. And, and, and he just looked at the sideline. That's, that's got to be concerning if you're Dutch Fork. He leaves the game for at least this play. Picks up an A&I fire and water first down. And on the A&I fire and water restoration first down, Gaffney will meet him at the 36-yard line. By the way, our third down, our first downs in this third quarter brought to you by A&I fire and water throughout when disaster strikes and always rely on A&I. So, so Marcus Taylor ran the ball the last time. They bring in another back, Braxton Lodge, in the ball game now as Green is on the sideline still. And that stable of wide receivers you know too well. Here comes Williams tightening the formation up just a little bit and digging through traffic to make his way all the way to the 41-yard line. All right, speak to that. We're calling some new names all of a sudden here in the third quarter as Dutch Fork gets a number of those peripheral pieces involved. They are. Braxton Lodge, that's because of Green goes to the sideline, but they will play three or four backs to give him a break. The Lodge is a senior, 5'9", 165. He's more of a between-the-tackles runner. He just did it right there and got a good burst. Make a third and short. You see exactly what he brings on third down. And again, keeping an eye on any effects on Jarvis Green that are lasting because he's such a key piece. All these backs on both sides are of what these two teams are able to accomplish. And ahead of the third down play, 
A timeout taken by Dutch Fork, first of the half with just under a second. Shy of seven minutes remaining. And a third quarter, still just six. The separation for the 5A state championship. What are you supposed to do now? Wait around? Follow those who let life just happen to them. Or forge your own path. And walk alongside those who defy expectations. Letting, Letting nothing, nothing stand in your way. Technical colleges exist for those who envision more for themselves. A lot more than what others think we're supposed to do. But the future waits for no one. So what will you defy? All right, welcome back. Fieldside Natalie Spala here, joined by Steve Mann, who's the executive director of Sinclair's high school division. Now, we've seen it all across this weekend, but what can you say about Sinclair's commitment to high school sports here in South Carolina? Well, Natalie, we love it. South Carolina is so important to us. We start this season with Friday night rivals, Columbia, Charleston, Myrtle Beach, Greenville, and then we finish it up with the state championships right here in Columbia with a great 5A championship right now. And it's not just football, but also we're all gearing up for basketball season. So what can be said about the upcoming season? Exactly, Natalie. We really are. What's great is we finish up here, and then in January we go to our high school hoops and then the state championships. And the commitment that Sinclair makes financially with all the resources people-wise, we really do care and want to showcase the high school athletes in such a positive light in the state of South Carolina. And we know that Sinclair's footprint, it really stretches beyond South Carolina. It is nationwide. What can we say about Sinclair's commitment to high school sports all over the country? Natalie, it means everything to Sinclair. We're in 36 different markets. And with that, we've given back over $3 million in scholarships and school grants to the students in schools that have participated in Friday Night Rivals, Thursday Night Lights, and High School Hoops. And South Carolina, we love being here. Hopefully the fans are enjoying it at home, and we really are so proud to be a part of South Carolina high school sports. All right, great stuff. Thanks so much, Steve. Thank you. And broadcasting all five South Carolina State Championship games this year. Congratulations, Red Order. South Point getting it underway with a title Thursday night over Buford. Daniel taking down Camden picking up a state championship, the latest back-to-back -back for the Daniel Lions for the first time since the early 90s in the 3A game yesterday. Great Collegiate picking up a title last night for the first time in their first appearance against Silver Bluff and Southside Christian in the 1A ranks defeating Bamberg Earhart. It's another title for Southside Christian as they too go back-to-back -back with a 28-0 shutout a little bit earlier. So upper state championships all the way through to this point and the reigning champs on the march here in the 5A game, which is the one still up for grabs. And here is Williams underneath. That's a first down play going to be snuffed out for a loss. And while that interview was taking place, Dutch Fork moving into Gaffney territory, now facing a second down and about 12 when they sort it all out. Yes, and Green went out of the game. He looked like he was favoring his right knee or leg again. So he's he's been banged up a little bit tonight, but he'll, he'll probably bounce back in there. Departed a few moments ago. They decide to go to Williams on that last play. And again, we talked about it. Hurt in that contest last week against 4D. He ended up missing some time in the second half, kind of limited in his action. Out of the lineup right now for Dutch Fork as well. They go to Williams once again. Gaffney King on him. He was hit a couple of times but gets away. It's the yards after the catch and after the content. After the contact that makes the difference. Look at him go home to the end zone. And Dutch Fork has reestablished a two-score lead. I'll say it again as we re-examine the rushes touchdown here, Stacy. Yards after catch. Yards after contact. 
He's as good as anybody in this moment is Antonio Williams. And content. The content of this, this story is the fact that he's too good to you be contained. It. There's another word, contained. He's too good to be contained. That's an All-American right there. That's a P5 player. Everybody was All-American, and he just too much talent right there. As we see a block. Next Blocked point. by Gaffney. So alliterate it how you want. <laughs> Two-score game back in effect for Dutch Fork. But the kicking game, still a factor. A missed extra point, a blocked extra point. The lead at 19-7. Just when you think you've got Antonio Williams hemmed up, perhaps, he shows you just how explosive he is as a whiteout for the Foxes. too big for mom? a and I. It's time to call the experts. For over 40 years, a and I Fire and Water Restoration has been making your house a home again when disasters strike. Mom! a and I Fire and Water Restoration. Stay tuned at the conclusion of the game for the QFS transportation drive of the game. Learn more about partnering with one of the fastest growing companies in the industry. Go to QFSTransportation.com. Well, there's a drive that has extended the lead to 19-7. In favor of the reigning champion Dutch Fork Silver Foxes as the 5A title contest continues. There's a look at the drive. Nine plays, nearly 80 yards up over four minutes. It was quite the performance for this Dutch Fork offense. And they had green in and out along the way, a lot more eyes on Williams, and yet he was still able to break free and find the end zone. Uh, Dutch Fork's doing a good job of hitting swing passes, screens, and getting extra blockers out there. And plus, uh, he's been such a physical receiver after he catches the ball. Handled at the five, and the Gaffney return by Daddle. He's got no room over there, and it's going to be hemmed up at the 17-yard line. A host of Dutch Fork Silver Foxes over there to make the stop. Kennard among those in on that coverage play, Stacy. He just kicked off with his left foot. I'm pretty sure he kicked the extra points with his right foot. I, I, I want to... We can check that out. From I, he just kicked off with his left foot right there. That'll be something interesting. To, just a just a side note of the play. I think he kicked off with his left foot, and and, and the right foot was this is the extra point. So I don't know what's going on there, but that's interesting. He kicked with both legs. We'll have him check it. First down coming <laughs> for the Gaffney Indians at uh, just shy of their own 20 yard line, needing an answer to this Dutch Fork drive. And that's caught. Able to pull back, get around a defender for a few extra yards. After the catch himself, Jadarius Littlejohn. That's a first down for Gaffney. Pending the penalty here now. There is a penalty flag down at the 24. Right, right, right foot. Extra point with the right foot. <laughs> kickoff. <laughs> with the left. A little southpaw kick, kickoff action there. That's just strange. Yeah. Just wondering if he maybe tries one of these kicks with the other foot. He hadn't had a success with the right one. Uh, interesting. He's and a freshman kicker, he's got plenty of time in his career to decide <laughs> which way he wants to go, right? <laughs> he's right. confused. He's, he's still young. Ambidextrous with the feet. Yeah, hey, it's a luxury. <laughs> Most would say, I'd like to be able to do it with one or the other. Right. To have a young man who is in a position to make a difference with both. You just tip the cap. Great work. Great eye there, Stacy. And nice job by the folks in the truck giving you a good look at <laughs> the difference in kicking styles. Here's on a first and 15 <laughs> after the penalty. A toss in the direction of Jeffries, but he can't gather it in. And it's going to be Gaffney remaining behind the sticks here. So we've seen on both sides of this thing, number of big plays negated by some miscues. And in the 14th, 15th game for Gaffney, 15th, let's talk about it, in the 13th game for Dutch Fork, some of those things that uh, yeah. these teams you maybe aren't accustomed to seeing with them. Maybe trying too hard for this title. Well, there's a lot on the line. Yes. That much is sure. Yes. Second down and long. And Loftus 
Right, Try to dump it to Jeffries over the middle again. That was the design, but too much juice on this. So some frustration showing now, a little con conversation between players, a little uh, gesturing. And you said we, we've seen that a couple of different times on both, both sides. Teams. I think that also speaks to the elevated stakes here and how you know you better seize this moment because it may not come again. That's true. And, you know, the time is running out. And, and a lot of these guys, it will be their last high school game, uh, maybe their last uh, organized game. So they want it to be as good as it possibly can be. Here comes third down. It's going to be third down 15. Not just steps up. Got a man open, able to provide his own tip drill and then catch the football, <laughs> go across the 30, and that will be enough time, to move the chains. First down, Gaffney on the connection with Jaden Tate, one of the senior wideouts. 5'9", 160, comes away with it here for the Indians. That's a big, that's a big play. Down two scores. They need a drive right here. An a and I water restoration first down. Well, you talk about it, Coach, this being the moment. As they turn and give the ball to Tyler Smith here, he's covered up. The Gaffney coaching staff said their last message to this group was going to be, you know, you watch these two teams play for the state championship game. Those of you who are playing in this game, you were seven, you were eight, you were nine years old, you were in the stands, and you were saying to your friends, my moment's going to come when I'm going to be out there. Their moment has now arrived, and the challenge from both of these coaches' staffs, do not let that moment pass you by. Well, we got... A quarter and about 340 past that to determine who's going to seize the moment. Second down. Across the 40 to the 42 stacked up there. But you dream about it for a lifetime. You prepare for it down through the decades. It's handed off like a baton from one generation to the next. But it comes down to these moments in time where you have a chance to seize the day. And they'll certainly remember the rest of their life, whether they come out champions tonight or just you know, champions from their upper state or lower state. When you grow up and on a mill hill or out on a farm or in a complex near town, whatever the case is, in the shadow of the kind of programs that have been built in these two locations, Tricky County there, Dutch Fork as well. They've run behind the power once. It just means more. And on this third down, Gaffney went. able to dig deep and pick it up. What they do there, Coach? Well, they, they came opposite where their strength was as far as they brought the big two heavies in the backfield. Um, first time, they ran behind them. The second time, they ran opposite them and kind of brought them on a counter. So they went back to that this time as well. And Dutch Fork is trying to guess with them which way they're going to try to run it. So Gaffney first down and A&I water restoration first down. Another thing that comes to mind, Stacey, when you talk in terms of the expectations for these two teams, you're going to hear about this for a lifetime because when you're at Dutch Fork or you're at Gaffney, this met far side. Gaffney trying to go behind the line, create some space and an opening for Little John. There was none. That was as good an open field response as you're going to see, Stacey. Javon Mack has been very impressive with me. I talked about him earlier. Junior, you said limited action. He is announcing himself on a, the biggest stage on the final Saturday of this season, and 26 is showing up. Yeah, I was talking about the way he sees the moment in limited action, but when you got the county expectations on you, these two teams do. Yep. It's talked about in the barbershop. It's going to be discussed at church. Oh, it's going to be every. You're going to live with what happens here <laughs> on this day for a lifetime. This is a legendary type day. You make yourself a legend in your town with a Saturday like this. Things far more important than football, but in terms of football, as good as it gets. And too much underneath it. Was he able to get his hands yeah. underneath it? Call it incomplete. Is, of course, being right, but he did not. It is going to hit the turf incomplete. Nick was not quite right enough to get his hands under that one. He has been all year, not yeah, particularly on not, this not, play. No, Nick, Nick's been right most of the year. The senior. 139 left on the third quarter game clock and another <sighs> important third down coming right here and right now. Got to say almost, but a break for Gaffney. Gaffney has a chance here now to convert and keep the drive alive. Need the 44-yard line of Dutch Fork do the Indians. And to get tense here in the latter stages of the third quarter. And that's tossed away. And we do. He had number 11 down here on the flat. He just didn't look for him. You see the fourth down put in effect again. There's a lot of pressure on these quarterbacks rolling out to make the right play there. They put a, they put a pressure on both of these young quarterbacks to, to deliver. And sometimes it'll connect, sometimes not. But a lot of football left to play to get it right. Two seconds left in the half. Gaffney set to kick it away. Mm, A.J. Kick. Haynes puts a foot into it. It's going to take a major Gaffney bounce. 
hold what you got there. It's going to be blown <laughs> dead inside the 15 yeah, yard line. That thanks for the bounce. And with 119 to play, that's where Dutch Fork will take over. But you think about it. You're put to bed in these two towns, in the shadow of these two schools, with stories of those who've come before. You think of the great names who've made their mark, and now you have a chance to etch yours alongside of that. That's what they're playing for on a day like this. That much is sure. Look at the mind churning for Coach Tommy Knott's trying to pick up number seven here in South Carolina. Established a new standard for football in both Carolinas. Seven on the other side of the state line, trying to make it seven on this side, and six in a row for Dutch Fork as they go back to work offensively. Right into the heart of the pile as all the big bodies collide just inside the 20-yard line. Green back in there again. Up tries the middle that time, but good to see him back in. In the backfield, that junior. Been kind of in and out in the early stages of the second half, and now you certainly hope he's in a position to farewell down the stretch, at least be a part of things. We talked about it. You have to be a couple of players shaking up early. You want to see them all full song for what is turning into a potential classic battle once more. And that is intercepted by Bullock again. That is the second time Landon Bullock has found his way to the football. He has six of them on the year, and that's the takeaway Gaffney had been waiting for in striking distance here, trying to make a game of it headed to the fourth. There it is. He just got his hands under. Good job by Bullock. That's two for Bullock. Making a bid for defensive player of the game, I believe, there. Well, he's been that across the course of the season. We're told by the Gaffney folks, and he has shown up just as large in the state title environment here. 42 seconds remaining. Gaffney takes over in Dutch Fork territory at the 24-yard line. And trying to make it count right away. Here is Smith down inside the 10. Move the chains. That's another A&I fire and water restoration first down for Gaffney with a half minute to go. Momentum trying to switch over to black. Now, let me be clear. We still got a whole other fun quarter left of this. But 34 it. seconds. Now taking downward to 25 and beyond. Remaining in the third quarter. Can't be trying to return it to a one-score contest here. Smith, after the snap was handled well by Loftus, gets right down to the five-yard line. We'll see if Gaffney opts to, to run another play on second and goal as we're inside 10 seconds remaining in the third. No, sir. Looks like four fingers are going to go in the air on both sidelines. They know it's going to come down to a 12-minute battle for a 5A crown. Dutch Fork and Gaffney headed to the fourth. The reigning champs up 19-7 to seven with one quarter of action remaining. <laughs> QFS is looking for Class A CDL owner-operators in your local area. QFS offers an excellent owner-operator program with huge fuel discounts and great weekly pay. If you are a self-motivated owner-operator in the local area with two-plus years over-the-road experience, give our office a call or visit us online to learn more about joining one of the fastest-growing companies in the industry. I have a lot of things I want to do. I like I like being in charge of others. My confidence how I really build up stuff in here. This place has shown me like it's not good to run from your education. It's um a really great place. You got people here that are willing to help you. It's something that's gonna get you through every day. It's just something you have to have. And they're making it possible for me because if I wasn't here, I would not be in high school. Silver Foxes. 
One of these two teams, perhaps 12 minutes away, maybe more, who knows, from a 5A state championship, 19-7, the Dutch Fork lead. As Gaffney is knocking on the door after the latest turnover. Well, we remind you, you can pick up your cool pass, experience Columbia with it. You get the combo ticket of three major attractions, the South Carolina State Museum, Adventure Children's Museum, and Riverbank Zoo. They got the nice lights, the nice lights display going on there too right now that you can enjoy. You'll pay less than individual tickets. After all the fun, discounts on souvenirs to take home with the memories. Get your tickets or give them as a gift. CoolPassTickets.com. Speaking of snagging a memory, a state championship memory there for the taking between Dutch Fork and Gaffney. You know the drill by now. Dutch Fork trying to make it six in a row. Seven in the last decade here in South Carolina. Gaffney looking for what they would call an 18th all-time. And the first since they defeated this Dutch Fork team in 2012 in a state title game. The only other meeting between these two schools. And after the Bullock interception toward the end of the third period, Gaffney now faces a third and goal after being stacked up there. What's available to you in the playbook right now if you're Gaffney, Coach? Well, they've got their two what I call heavies in the backfield with the uh, Wildcat running back in there. And they're trying to guess left or right. And uh, they, they still... You know, you got a guy that's rushed for over 1,000 yards back there carrying it. It's a pretty good option with two big guys in front of him. Well, it's going to be straight two out of the Wildcat Smith, and he is in. Touchdown, Gaffney. First second half score for the Indians. They capitalize on the interception from Landon Bullock. Defense translates into offense, and the rush's touchdown makes it 19-13. Now, you got to love this, Stacy. We looked over a moment ago, and Coach Eddie Muldrow pulled out his wallet. Yeah, absolutely. And he still has the little cheat sheet <laughs> about when you go for one and when you go for two in these touchdown scenarios. He said you kick it right here. Absolutely. Gaffney does, and it's good. 19-14. <laughs> Old habits die hard. Do they not, Coach? They must have the same cheat sheet. <laughs> What's the coach? Always the coach. That's right. <laughs> Stacy. A football game that is now a one-possession contest again early fourth quarter. Well, I, I, I've been calling all week Eastern Classic, and we have all the makings. Five points are the, the difference, and two points left in the balance because of extra points. Problems with the Dutch Fork Silver Foxes, and it may come back to haunt them again. Let's look at this interception right here that led to that, that touchdown that drew them nearer, for, speaking of Gaffney. Here's Bullock. The pressure obviously applied, and Bullock is able to pick it off. And then Coach... Smith, who was limited to 55 yards on nine carries in the first half, coming to life here in the early stages of the fourth quarter, has a state championship touchdown, like his dad, no less, adding his name to that Gaffney lore. He's into the end zone. Yes, and he, he followed the two big guys, so that's pretty good, pretty good leverage behind that play anyway. Yeah, Sawyer Whitman, 66, is one of those guys. They move him back, and they just got they just got put on roller skates. Speaking of Dutch Ford, they got put on roller skates in the goal line and pushed into the end zone. You know what they're talking about at Gaffney? You think back to all the, the Kentrell Joneses and, and the Colemans. And yes. We talked about that 92 team. The coaching staff telling us, Stacy, that they had a host of players who's either dad or uncle or cousin or some yeah. kind of relative uh, was on those teams. And, 16. You know, Sidney Rice comes to mind uh, when you think of those who, who played in, in those black and gold colors and the latest of those championship-type memories being secured here. And now it's Dutch Fork's turn to add another chapter to what has been the run in South Carolina history in recent days. And Coach, this is an important drive coming up for the Silver Foxes. It certainly is, but going back to what Stacy said earlier, now if you come down to a field goal situation, are you willing to trust a guy that's already had one block and one miss, or do you try to put it in the hands of your offense who's been explosive all year to try to get that touchdown? Big decisions coming up if it comes to that for Dutch Fork. See how Patterson has been pressured by that Gaffney D and what it has resulted in the two Bullock touchdowns. And this Gaffney crowd 
trying to get in behind the Indians on the near side. But Green, good to see him back out there. And he's able to continue to fight through, works his way across midfield into the 44. That'll quiet him just a little bit as he moves the chains. He's, he's going to leave the game again. He's playing with a lot of heart right now. The kid is not healthy. He's coming in for a play running and going to the sideline to recuperate and coming back and forth. He's going out again, but he's giving him all he has right now. Tough junior. Ticking under 11 minutes remaining in the football game. Lead just five for Dutch Fork. Trying to reestablish a two possession advantage and stacked up, but after a gain of three or four here. Boy, you hear that crowd just below us just a moment ago. This is a Gaffney team that despite being undefeated, they had to go on the road to Northwestern. Won an overtime game down there in thrilling fashion, a, a place at District 3 Stadium that's so tough to play over the years for them and everyone else. And then on the road to Spartanburg, their historic rival, and, and coming to Columbia, Dutch Fork's backyard. But they have traveled well, and they are being heard from again here on this second down, this crowd. 10-20 to play. Important drive for Dutch Fork. And here's Green. The heart being shown by Green. He moves the chains again with a Will Lou Gray first down. And you cannot put into words the fight we're seeing from Green right now. He's, he's a tough competitor, that's for sure, because he's been banged up and he's bounced back. Jarvis Green just keeps him churning and has a, a fresh set for Dutch Fork at the 32. With some pace here, a little bit of movement for Williams into the interior. That's going to create another blocker. They sent Green, countered it with Patterson, but this time Gaffney was waiting. Eddie Tate McDowell there to meet Davin Patterson, the QB. That's a play deserving of three names right there. There's he, he, a three-name play right there. Take a look at him coming off the edge right here. They tried to show the trigger ratio. They knew they were keying on Green, and they were waiting on it. That's just a good defensive job sitting down, playing in your lane by the uh, Gaffney defense. Looked a lot like the play he scored on to open the scoring Truly. in this football game. Truly. This time Gaffney had it sealed off. Second down and 11. Caught Williams. Move the sticks again. He's on the doorstep of the sound and images red zone. As Dutch Fork will set up shop Actually, he's going to be right on at the 20-yard line, so let's go ahead and tell you. Sound and Images, proud sponsors of our Red Zone tonight. They can help your business or organization stand out. Visit them at soundandimages.net. They are your commercial provider of audio-visual solutions all across South Carolina. First down, Dutch Fork. Red Zone opportunity. For the Silver Foxes, tossed up and incomplete. They are going to say that the pass was caught out of bounds by Sowell, so incomplete. He's 6'4 wide receiver. Take a look. He's just about six inches out of bounds right. Uh, he got his, his heel came down, but his, the rest of the foot was out of bounds. It was a timing play. But they're going back with Patterson throwing the ball now. They're tightened up and constricted the offense. Now they're opening up a little bit with two passes back to back. What did coaching staffs tell us? We invoked Sidney Rice's name a little bit exactly. ago. Who had yes, quite the career, Carolina. Oh, yes, that kind of size. And listen. Six they four. said when you're always open when you've got so that kind of four. size, you Especially can throw to him at all times. Right. And Sowell brought it in, just could not quite stay in bounds in the process. Second Seven. down coming. It's a flag down. That was a flag on that line judge. They're going to back Dutch Fork up. That'd be delay of game or legal, legal procedure. It's actually, mo yeah, motion. So behind the sticks, and every time this happens, you look for eight to maybe touch the ball, Jason. Well, Williams, who is been a factor. You think about just the first half that he put together. Able to roll up nearly 100 yards on eight catches in the opening period, even though the two touchdowns in that first half belong to Patterson. Second down, they're going to call it 15. And a flag comes out as this is caught at the 12-yard line. So L Lyman downfield, I believe. It was like an RPO run pass option. I think one of the linemen went downfield. Ineligible receiver. Good call, coach. Downfield. Mojo's on fire. He sees it. He, he knows things. Well, it, it's, it's hard for the linemen when they call those type plays. They're aggressively blocking, thinking it could be a run. 
and then the quarterback pulls and throws, and they're doing their job, but they may be three yards downfield and get, get called for it. Jason, long way to go here, but this is four down territory for Dutch. They're not going to kick a field goal, so we're looking at four plays, four downs here. Well, with, the, with the coach's mind in here, we don't need to let the night slip away without seeing a couple of great coaches. Yes. David Gutshaw in the upstate who brought Dorman here so often, calling it a career. Yes, and also did. Phil Strickland at Newberry, who spent some time at Gaffney, won a handful of titles there for the Indians, a trio of them, both seeing their careers come to a close this year. Two great coaches, just like the gentleman in the booth with us who had outstanding careers, great friends of ours along the way. And we say Absolutely. congratulations yes. on the opportunity to take a breather and enjoy some time with your family and beyond. I'm going to share a little bit about with Newberry Coach Strickland. I talked to him on the phone before we did a regular season game. He said, I said, what are you going to do as you retire? He said, I'm going to take $6 and fight it out. I'm going to go around and tell people they're doing a bad job. Like people did for me in my career. That's a funny line. That's, that's a classic story. <laughs> they drive around and do that. Well, they, uh, they have a, a unique perspective, those who've given their life to this game. Third down and long. And Patterson sealed up. Gaffney forcing fourth and long at the 30. These defenses stiffening when it matters most. Certainly, and I want, I'd like to go back and recognize those two coaches. I got to work with Coach Gutschall in the North-South game, and I tried to compete against Phil Strickland, but he always found out so many easy ways to beat us. But both of them are first-class people, and we wish them retirement. There's plenty of open spots on golf courses throughout the state. <laughs> well said. Plenty of stories on both of those individuals, and uh, congratulations to them on outstanding, legendary Hall of Fame careers. Fourth down. At the 30-yard line, Dutch Fork needs the 10. Going for the end zone. A collision. They want a flag on the far side, but none is coming. And the Gaffney defense has forced yet another turnover on downs inside Gaffney territory. I don't know that Antonio Williams is in the game on that play. They went to, they went to Sowell on that fourth down play. I don't know that Antonio Wings was in the formation. I'll have to check that, but interesting call. These Indian fans into it now. Here's one more look at the contact far side. Yep. As you said, going for Sal, the ball well beyond, incomplete. And it's now first down, Gaffney at the 30. Indians trailing by five with seven minutes, seven seconds on the scoreboard in the fourth period. And flags before this one gets off. Yeah, while they sort this flag out, one story that uh, Coach Dan Jones passed along, you know, we thank both coaches for the Dead time ball. they give us. Fault start on the offense. And the moments they share with us. You were talking about Coach Phil Strickland. He said, when Coach Strickland came to Gaffney, obviously he was on the staff. He said, uh, he said Coach Strickland called and said, I think I'm going to run the option up there. And he said, well, we've got a kid named Sidney Rice. You might want to come look. <laughs> Needless to say, they didn't run the option. And you know how it all worked out for, for Gaffney and beyond in the career. But uh, just one of the great coaches. And, and now here's Coach Jones and his crew trying to etch their name alongside those state championships of, of Phil Strickland. And, you know, coaches, like we said, like A.L. Curtis in that Gaffney history. And Joe Montgomery, who won those 90s championships. People point to that 93 team he had, lost to Northwestern 2-0 yeah. on a safety. It's maybe the best team ever played for this school. He's there. Over 100 wins for Gaffney. Trying to kind of book in state championships. He won it when he took over in 12. Now he's got number 12 at the quarterback position, Grayson Loftus, trying to go on the march to perhaps claim another with six and a half to play as Gaffney's right in the thick of it. But, boy, that Dutch Fork defense swarm into the football, though there are three or four there. Actually, more than that. This, they were behind the sticks there. This is going to be about five or six, and third down is coming. Huge play coming up right here. This is a huge play this game. With, it'll be under six minutes when the ball is snapped. Only a couple of possessions left in the balance there, Jason Patterson. The stakes elevated with every one of these third downs as we dip under six minutes remaining. Third and five Gaffney. Down five on the scoreboard for a 5A title crown, which is going to be handed out here in just a bit in Columbia. Jeffries, he caught that one-handed and is across the 50-yard line. Jeffries had the touchdown catch earlier. This one's just as impressive in terms of how he reeled it in, Coach. Yes, one hand, big play. Uh, they needed to keep that drive alive, and he made the play. 
Suga Jeffries for the Gaffney Indians has a first down across the 50 at the 49 of Dutch Fork with 531 to play. But this is where it's been tough. We've seen Dutch Fork tighten up defensively. What's the old saying, Stacy? Bend, but, no but do not break. We've yep. seen both teams do it. Hard to finish these drives for two of the high-powered offenses in the state because of these solid defensive efforts. And digging for every inch of real estate is Smith down to the 44. That's where you rely heavily upon these backs. And I see Coach, he's looking for the card again in case something happens here. He's trying, <laughs> trying to keep up with where things sit scenario-wise. Well, it's a 10-yard fight now Absolutely. with championship pedigree on display. It's in the DNA of these players for these two schools. It's expected when the season starts at places like Dutch Fork and Gaffney. They wanted to be right here with a chance at a title. Both of them have it. And here's another Gaffney ground attack moment down to the 35-yard line. That'll move the chains. Little John. That's a Will Lou Gray first down. And just when you think you're seeing Tyler Smith over and over again, Ken Littlejohn raises his hand and says, remember me. And as Stacy mentioned earlier, you almost feel like the momentum has kind of swung back toward Gaffney now. It seemed like Dutch Fork had it earlier in, in this half, but now it's kind of swinging the other way. Well, the thousands that departed the reservation had that big party up there, <laughs> the big pep rally last yeah. night, and have made their way below us. They're trying to help with that momentum right now. And under duress, this is going to be just thrown away. Nick Wright was applying serious pressure around that backside right there. By Loftus. You think about the preparation for this moment. One thing we didn't talk about, you know, Gaffney renting out Carolina's facilities, coming down yesterday, walking through, practicing at the Steve Spurrier facility, yeah. taking the team out for barbecue, getting them ready for this environment. You were at practice. There was quite the guest at the De Dutch Fork practice yes, this uh, week. C.J. Spiller was there, and uh, he was looking at Dutch Fork's running back. So uh, trying to get an evaluation on him, even though he's just a junior. So you see so. all the stops being pulled of the individuals who've come back. They've had some of the uh, older players come back and speak to these two teams. And now both these communities on edge with 4-12 to play to settle the 5A title, and nothing is decided just yet. It's almost well, like a little bit later on, we're going to have the defensive play of the game, and, boy, that's going to be a, another hard one to pick. We'll be selecting the Roper St. Francis Healthcare defensive play of the game. Roper St. Francis reminding you, and we echo it, may the lights shine bright on your blessings so you can count them one by one. Well, if we counted the defensive plays in this game one by one, we're going to be here a while. And who knows but what there's another coming. You get the sense, and we were talking about it a little bit during the break. You mentioned it, Stacy and Coach, nodding your head over here. This may very well be the drive not only of the game but of the season for these two teams. Second and ten, and it is met immediately as Chandler Perry would have none of it for Dutch Fork. Lost his helmet. He's got to go out for a play, but that's an emotional kid. And I talked about heat-seeking missile. That's exactly what it looked like right there. 5'9", 206. He'll play on Saturdays. Take a look at this. Well, Just, the, the combo of Wicker and Perry, the way they played tonight, as good as you're going to see. He had 121 tackles across the course of the regular season. Wicker, 122. What a combo they've been in the heart of that Dutch Fork defense. Third and long for Gaffney, third and 15. Oh. Indians are gonna need the 25 yard line and it's a timeout for Gaffney. That's the first timeout taken by the Gaffney Indians. 
with 3.38 remaining in what is a five-point football game for the 5-8 title. Well, three-quarters plus into this thing now, you begin to reflect a little bit on the journey to this point. What a night. What a season. What a history for these two programs. And the Titans collide on a Saturday evening in Columbia. And we still don't know yet, gentlemen, how this thing's going to shake out. Suspense. We have what I like to call drama here at Charlie W. Johnson Stadium on Benedict Campus. And look at the stands right there. Arms folded. Everyone's standing up. This is what, you, this is what it's all about right here. And remember, Dutch Fork having won them like this in recent years. They turned away a dormant two-point conversion for a state title, scored in overtime in a game the three of us were together Absolutely. on up in the corner for a state ago. title a couple of years ago. And you know the storied history for both these programs. Embracing the environment, it's everything they could have hoped. Third and long for Gaffney. Stepping up, eluding the initial tackler and hitting Jeffries again over the middle for the Gaffney touchdown. And for the first time tonight, the Indians lead it late in the fourth quarter. They're going to go for two right here. Coach talked about this prior. They're going for two to make it a field goal game. And Columbia what a play by Lucas. erupts with the rushes touchdown for Gaffney. It's, it's Jeffries from Loftus again. With 3.30 to play, timeout being called for by Gaffney to determine exactly how they're going to handle this with a 20-19 advantage what a play Loftus had people all around his feet right there he had just enough protection showed the poise and a good route that time by Jeffries great play all the way around take a look at it coach stepped up in the pocket stepped up in the pocket and found him in the middle of the field on a post route second such touchdown for Jeffries tonight and don't forget the one-handed catch at midfield by Jeffries a little bit earlier he's had a monster state championship game for Gaffney and here are the Indians having pushed ahead for the first time at 20 to 19 and the chop ensues as if this has suddenly become the reservation south here at Benedict College Stacy they came to take over we said they came early they planned to stay late and they plan to leave with what they came for they rolled up the sidewalks in Gaffney South Carolina the whole town is here it seems like and they're in full voice, and right now they have everything to cheer about with a two-point conversion to make it a field goal lead. They said the ghosts of their history used to live at the old reservation. You said it. Packed some of them up, brought them to Columbia tonight, sure, and sure. Gaffney's out front. Coach, you're seeing schematically. Yeah, well, what the offense has, the option here, putting it on a hash mark or anywhere in between the hashes. They should have had probably three plays at least during the year for two-point plays they practice every week. This needs to be their best one. Huge because you know Dutch Fork is going to have an answer of some type across the final 330 and the kicking game a little suspect. That's why these decisions are being made. A missed extra point and a blocked extra point already. So Gaffney from the far hash on the two-point play to try to extend it to a three-point lead. So that would take a touchdown for Dutch Fork to snatch it away in the later stages. That's the thought process for the He's Indians. Open. Rolls near side, finds a man wide open in the back, and the Indian lead is three as Deshaun Corey brings in the two-point play. Total coverage bust right there, Coach. Gaffney, 22. Dutch Fork, 19. 3.30 to play. Look at Coach Jones. Stoic. He knows it's not over yet, but a lot of excitement beneath us in these stands. The greatest quote maybe of the week from Coach Jones. He said, all you hope for is that you're fortunate enough to make it to a state championship environment because it takes a lot to get there. And then you hope your players play up to their God-given ability. And if they do, you'll accept the result. We talked about how he just stepped up and eluded the pressure. We've seen the God-given ability of so many tonight, and Loftus to Jeffries, and now here's the two-point play, Stacy, that put Gaffney up three. Coach. What, what they did, the tight end knelt down like he fell, got up on his feet, and ran a delay route across the formation. Trickeration. They got a Richard Canary right there at the end. Look at it. Look at it. There, look at it right there in your face. In your face. Show him the ring. Show him the ring. There's the ring right there. Well, he's looking for <laughs> another. Between these two programs, 
you're out of fingers and toes trying to keep up with the race. race. Another one's going to be handed out, and Gaffney, for the first time, believing they're in position to claim it. They believed all along, but when they look at the scoreboard now, find themselves up 22-19 with 3.30. But you know the beliefs there. The confidence is there on the Dutch Fork side. No return met by Eddie Tate McDowell, and Dutch Fork will take over in its own territory at around the 28-yard line. One thing that Gaffney's done a great job, they've tried to keep it out of the hands, of course, uh, Dutch Fork's great receiver on all kicking situations because they knew he was a big, big threat for any type of play. Major reminder, the winning streak in South Carolina on the line. The five state championships in a row on the line, but Dutch Fork with plenty of life left. 3.25 to go in the fourth period, down just three. Swung out. Williams inside, stays on his feet, just continues to keep the balance. Actually, Green checked that, who keeps his balance. He's been an absolute warrior tonight for Dutch Fork, and it's Green who moves the chains with the Will Do Gray first down and then limps off to the far side once again. We say clash of titans. We mean it. And these young men on both sides are playing like it, Stacy. Absolutely. Love to see the effort by both teams. Now it's Williams. He's across the 50 to the 49. What's Dutch up? Fork back into Gaffney territory with three and change to go. This one may be far from over, Coach Muldrow. I think you're right. I, I, and I believe that Coach Knotts is thinking we got to get a touchdown. We don't want to put it on our kicker just to try to get a time. A couple of touchdown runs tonight for Davin Patterson. He's been the calm, collected, solid field general this season for the Foxes. Can he engineer one more drive for a sixth straight state title? Out of bounds. Up top, but did not come down with the foot in bounds as they tried to again use the size and length of Sal. And it is going to set up a third down and short. Major play coming here, Coach. Take us inside the mind of both of our coaches in these moments. Well, Dutch Forrest got plenty of time to run the ball and make the first down. Uh, they probably will because Gaffney's got to be a little bit. They don't want to get beat deep on something, so you're probably going to see just a conservative call here just to get the first down. That Gaffney defensive front trying to get a push. Push comes from the Dutch Fork line, and that looks to be enough to move the chains. Another Will Lou Gray first down. Dutch Fork will quiet this crowd for a moment. Talked about this in essence kind of being a road game for Gaffney having to come to Columbia and Dutch Fork's backyard. In the last several moments, it's felt like a road game for Dutch Fork just in terms of the sheer sounds that are rising from Benedict College tonight. But with every movement of the chains, Dutch Fork in position to reclaim the reins. Under 240 to play. Back to Sal, they, they, just out of his reach. They keep trying that play to Sal, but it hasn't worked. It's not been accurate passing there. He's been covered, and it's been in. Yeah, he's coming up Gimpy right now as well. So he's limping off after that incompletion. Well, and that allows us to underscore, Coach, just what a physical game this has been start to finish tonight. Everything you would expect out of the 5A classification. It, it certainly has. And again, I mentioned earlier, both offenses probably get more recognition but there's been a lot of licks delivered by both defenses tonight. These guys are getting banged up. Top level in the state, many of the top players in the state. Last championship to be handed out in the fall of 21 here in the state. Patterson under pressure. Bray Sean Littlejohn able to wrap him up with the sack. Down to two plays now. Two minutes and 24. And the clock rolling, you're not guaranteed to get the ball back if you're Dutch Fork right here. And remember, just one Dutch Fork timeout remaining. Absolutely. They took a couple of timeouts earlier in the half, so so much hinges on this drive now. Brace Sean Littlejohn. And that's a country mile for a first down. They need to get at least half of it back right here. Well, it's a long-distance phone call right here. One of the trademark <laughs> Gaffney names mentioned by coaching staff, so many. Comes up with a big play right now. You said it, third and a mile. They need the 36 on the other side of the field. Williams. And he's met just as he was trying to bring it in. He got, he got Timely arrival by Eddie Tate McDowell. And Williams now a little bit slow getting up. He's put a physical ball game, but he's hurt right now. He's, he's injured right now. He's, he's hurt. 
And that was a tough lick he took, stretching out for that football. Ball thrown right on his fingertips, coach, and you'll see it just as he was trying to reel it in. That's when the defender arrived, and Eddie Tate McDowell, whose name we've called a couple of different times, with a couple of other Gaffney Indians there, able to make enough contact yeah. to keep him from grabbing it. And now our thoughts with Antonio Williams as he remains down at the 25-yard line. He almost made a miraculous catch Absolutely. there, and he got hit right in the chest. So he hopefully just a little bit out of breath and can come back in the game. But the thing is, if you take him off for a play, though, it's fourth down. This is the play you need him on the field right this here. This is the play of the season at the moment for Dutch Fork and Gaffney coming up. But bigger than football, the thoughts right now on Antonio Williams, who's being tended to by that training staff. You see Dutch Fork on fourth down this season. That's what's coming. It's going to be fourth down. Dutch Fork needing the Gaffney 35. They'll snap the football from the Dutch Fork 44, these two teams. And that's uh, one of the better moments of the night. You see Antonio Williams hop up. And on both sides, all those players that we've seen in this very physical battle of the Titans but go head-to-head, -head, collide tonight. They've all been able to get up, leave under their own power. But you said it, Stacy. The helmet, the departure, it's huge ahead of this fourth down. Does he have to set out a play right here? Because he, it was a, they took a time, injury timeout for him. Does he have to sit out? That's the best playmaker on fourth and 20. This, this is the ball game right here. Very well could be. Very well could be. Stranger things have happened True. with a minute 52 to go. But it certainly is the position Dutch Fork is in right now to keep this drive going. 30 five yard line again needed by Dutch Fork on the Gaffney side of the field and here's the fourth down play set it up underneath blocked beautifully but still about Short. three yards shy of the first down the Gaffney defense has turned the Foxes away once more Jacob Hamilton I'd watched it practice they ran on some reverses he's a quick receiver and they, they put it in his hands to try to make it. He did everything he could to try to get that first down. The Gaffney Indians with a fourth quarter comeback for the ages if they can salt it away in the final 144, which remains on the game clock. And you can see the reaction on the far side. Look at the full stands near side. It's now a matter of whether this Gaffney offense can move the chains a couple of times and expire the clock. At one time, they need one first down. One first down. A 15 point, a 15 point unanswered streak by Gaffney has stolen this game right now. And I'll say it again, a fourth quarter comeback for the ages if the Indians are able to close this off. And they're trying to bring a, a title back, not only to Cherokee County, not only to Gaffney for the 18th time, but also back to the upstate. I mean, there was a stretch where upstate teams won 13 straight from 2012. Dutch Fork came along, changed that, put a dynasty together here. They've been the team everybody's been chasing for years. Now Gaffney trying to snatch a title away and add the latest chapter to their history here, Coach. What people can do now, nobody likes to get under center anymore, but it would scare me snapping shotgun when you're trying to run out the clock. Because uh, anything can happen with a bad snap now. Because you know Dutch Fork's going to crowd the center and try to get him nervous and make a bad snap. You know, we, we spent a moment with Chris Miller prior to the game as well, who was a longtime coach of Burns, who is now on the Gaffney defensive staff. He had a ring from Burns, more than one. He had a ring from Spartanburg when he was the head coach of the Vikings. He said he'd like to get one from Gaffney as well. And here they are in position to snatch the latest. And I'm going to throw Tommy Knotts in there too, Stacey. Think about it. The rings that Dan Jones has on the staff from 92 until now as either an assistant or a head coach. The rings Tommy Knotts has, 13 of them across two states. And Chris Miller for all those Burns titles and now another one perhaps here at Gaffney if they can close it out. We don't have enough fingers and toes to keep up with all the jewelry that is being handed out among this group of coaches. All that to say, great masterminds in this sport on the field. I actually broadcast the game in Clemson's Death Valley in 2011 where Chris Miller was the head coach of Burns and upset a top nationally ranked Gaffney team. Undefeated. Undefeated. Upset him. He was the head coach. Very emotional in that game. I interviewed him after the game. And that parlayed Gaffney into that title against Dutch Fork the first time these two teams ever met the very next year for the 2012 title. Here they are now nearly a decade later trying to do that again and win the two meetings all time against the Dutch Fork Silver Foxes. And 
We build this at the start as a clash between the traditional power in the history of South Carolina football and the new established standard in South Carolina football. Gaffney a minute and change away if they can convert on this third down from reminding everybody who the class of the field has always been in this state as they search for number 18. Don't get a delay of game. Go ahead and snap it. You hear that coach coming out. He's making sure. They got there a delay and there game. it is. Here comes the flag. So that, third that, down and six. That's, that's bad, right? Because it's going to make sure Dead that going to get the ball back. Delay a game. With better field position. Too. Third down and six is going to become third down and 11. And again, Gaffney needs to move the chains if they plan to salt this away. Dutch Fork still in position to touch the football once more, even without the timeouts if they stop Gaffney here. And Antonio Williams will be in the game next time they get the ball. Unless they can run enough time off this go-round. Let's see here. Little John, he splits it. 41-42 yard line. All right, the clock's at 42 seconds as they get ready to reset this thing. There's about a four-second separation between the play clock and the game clock, and we'll see how Gaffney treats this. With just a few seconds, they'll need to handle on fourth down. You could take it and run backwards. Make sure you don't fumble and, and run away from the defense to run out the clock. Or you could punt it with one second on the clock, and by the time it comes down, punt it out of bounds. If, if you trust your punter and snap Good point. Big one. I, I would snap it to the quarterback and let him run backwards to the clock runs out. Because it's only like four seconds difference. Well, Gaffney has a timeout. They're likely going to run this down as far as it can go. Dead ball. Delay a game. Take the delay. And now you and snap it see what they do in the three seconds here. There is going to be a party to match them all. Here in Columbia tonight, all the way up Interstate 26, whatever back roads you may take to get to Cherokee County, depending upon what route you decide, and then at the reservation in the days ahead, because these Gaffney Indians have pulled off a comeback in the fourth quarter for the ages and now find themselves three seconds and a clean snap away from a 5A title. Time has expired. And it's going back to Gaffney. The Indians are back in black once again atop the heat in the Palmetto State. And for the first time, they have a 5A title to add to the extensive trophy case at the reservation in Cherokee County. Well done, well done. Gaffney Indians. We've had two exciting championships. This one in Dorman two years ago, so it's been quite a finish. 18th state championship all time for Gaffney. They are 2021 5A champions. And now Dan Jones, a couple of championships again. He's in there with the Bob Prevets, who won four for Gaffney. Joe Montgomery with those Gaffney titles in the 90s. In the 2000s, it was Phil Strickland adding to that. You think about A.L. Curtis and his great teams there. Dan Jones, his name alongside, and his Gaffney Indians have their moment to treasure for a lifetime with a 22-19 win over the Dutch Fork Silver Foxes. Gotta take your head off to them. They came, they conquered. They came in droves and support. The community rolled out. The team played hard, and they heard talk all week about being the underdogs. And they want to remind everybody, we have tradition, too. I told folks, I told the Coach Jones, Gaffney wanted everyone to remember, they have a championship pedigree. They had no fear and had a good plan, a lot of good players. And with all that, you get the 22-19 upset that stops the streak. The number they will celebrate in Gaffney, 22, as they get set to embrace and enjoy the moment as it has brought home an 18th state title. Most in the history of South Carolina for these Gaffney Indians. We'll break away, get ready to come back, wrap this one up. A lot of sights and sounds still to come from Columbia. Don't go anywhere. Congratulations to the Gaffney Indians. Back on top with a 22-19 win for the state title. COVID-19 vaccines are now available for children ages five and older. While it's normal for parents to have questions and concerns when making a decision for their child's health, it's critical that you turn to the right resources for accurate information. We're here to help. We encourage you 
to speak with your child's pediatrician to make an informed decision to protect your family. COVID-19 vaccines are proven safe and effective. Visit scdhec.gov for more information. Dutch Forks run of five consecutive state titles. What a moment in time. What a snapshot in South Carolina history it's going to be. But the team that has stood above the fray in the history of the Palmetto State all time, back on top of the 22-19 win for the latest of the Gaffney State Championships. It was defense throughout the course of this one. It's time for our Roper St. Francis defensive play of the game. Brought to you by Roper St. Francis. May the light shine bright on your blessings. Count them one by one. Well, you can count it to two in terms of interceptions for the young Mr. Bullock for Gaffney on the day. Yeah, he got two. Number five got two, and they were both huge. That last one was the real big momentum swing, and it led them to this upset win, and they are now crowned champions of 5-8. Well, fourth quarter comeback for Gaffney to be remembered down through the decades. Leads us to our QFS transportation drive of the game. You can learn more about partnering with one of the fastest growing companies in the industry. Go to QFSTransportation.com. And here's how it all got finished up. Here's how it all closed up. There was that look when Dutch Fork was attempting to extend the lead a bit. And then Gaffney went on the march, Coach. The finish true for a fourth quarter comeback. And they went back to their big time receiver for the, big, for the touchdown. Jeffries, who had a phenomenal night through the air, the Scaffney team adding the two-point conversion to make sure they had the three-point advantage would hold it for a 22-19 win. Our broadcast and that drive of the game presented by QFS Transportation. Don't go anywhere. They're going to present the trophy to the Gaffney Indians. And we'll hear from Victoria's head coach Dan Jones on the other side of the break. QFS is expanding and looking for self-motivated intermodal trucking agents in your local area. QFS provides best-in-class transportation management systems, insightful analytics, and fully customizable solutions to meet your individual needs. We're fully committed to helping your freight agency grow. If you're interested in taking your earnings to the next level, give us a call or visit us online to learn more about partnering with one of the fastest-growing companies in the industry. Nineteen twenty seven, nineteen twenty eight, nineteen twenty nine, thirty one, thirty four, sixty, sixty one, sixty three, sixty four, sixty five, eighty five, 
92, 97, 03, 05, 06, 012, and now flip it, 21. Those the state championships down through the decades for the Gaffney Indians. Trophy presentation taking place after a 22-19 win for Gaffney over Dutch Fork and an absolute slugfest. We called it a clash of titans a little bit earlier. And Gaffney with a fourth quarter for the ages to come away with the title. And here comes the trophy presentation as it gets set to be taken to Gaffney. All the, interestingly enough, upper state teams come away with titles this weekend. As you say congratulations not only to Gaffney getting ready for the trophy presentation here. Great Collegiate, Southside Christian, Daniel, and South Point. Congrats to all the champs. Here's Dan Jones. Again, over 100 wins. Right on the heels of Bob Prevett, who won the four state titles. He now has the one in 12 against Dutch Fork. This one here. And is all smiles. And there's the moment that Gaffney has been crowned the champion of South Carolina once more. He said... If you're fortunate enough to get to a state championship game and you hope your kids can play up to their God-given ability, and if they do, then you accept the results after you've given your best. His best on this night, Coach, good enough for yet another Gaffney title. It was. It was a thrilling finish. Uh, two great teams battling. Probably one of the most physical games where I've seen star players have to be carried out of the game but would fight to come back. Played with a lot of heart on both sides. Stacy, from 2000 to 2012, 13 straight top level in the state championships lived in the upstate of South Carolina. Gaffney, Dormans, Burns, Spartanburg. On down the line, it stayed in the upstate. Dutch Fork came in, changed that. Everybody's been chasing the Silver Foxes. This Gaffney team felt like they were representing the rest of the state, certainly the upstate and they were able to win one. A lot of people pulling for Gaffney that wouldn't normally. An underdog role for Gaffney, they don't usually have. They closed the deal and opened the state up for business once again with this title. To quote, my, to quote a legend, Frankie Beverly, it's like joy and pain, sunshine and rain. So some days are good, some days are bad, and now the good is on the side of Gaffney. And as you mentioned, it's open back up again. The, the giant has been slayed, and the rain and the pain is on the side of Dutch Fork. They've inflicted so much damage. And so much heartbreak. Dorman, they got dormant a few times <laughs> and, and across the state now. That dormant team that stood yes, in the way of Gaffney abs, getting abs, here abs, so abs, many years. Absolutely. So now it's, it's a rotate, it's a cycle, it's, it's cyclical. And, you know, sunshine and rain. Look at, look at the tears on the one side now and the joy on the Gaffney side. We saw two outstanding powers tonight going to be around and in the conversation for a long time to come. I'll say it again. The three coaches on the field, Dan Jones, who we're about to interview here in a moment, Tommy Knott's on the other side. Chris Miller, a part of the Gaffney staff. 17 of the past 19 state championships, one or the other of them's been on staff on one sideline or the other. That's amazing. <laughs> and Dan Jones, the latest to claim a crown as the head coach of Gaffney. He's now standing by with Natalie as a victorious state championship winning head man at Gaffney. Here he is. Yeah, Coach, you just defeated a team you described earlier this week as the team to beat in South Carolina. How do you feel about the way your guys performed this evening? Well, anytime you do, you knock off a five-time defending state champion, you got to feel really good. You know, it's been a while since we've been here, but we've been close a bunch of years. And this year we were able to knock the door down and get here. And then, you know, we, we turned it loose the second half and was able to get a victory against a very good football team. What was that moment in the second half where you knew your team had bought in and they were not going home with anything less than a victory tonight? I felt like when we scored the touchdown and then we got the two-point play, I felt like we were going to be able to shut them down defensively. They got some great players and they know how to get it to them, and, but our defense gave up a little bit and then we had a big sack. Brayshawn had a great sack and that put them in a tough situation. Now the Indian faithful, they showed up tonight. What can be said about this crowd that came all the way to show you guys support? Hey, it wasn't only this week, but certainly I've not, not seen a crowd that big, but it was it was last week at Spartanburg and the week before at Northwestern also. They've been fantastic through all this. All right, thanks so much, Coach. Enjoy your night. Back to you guys. Jeffrey's a big game. He talked about 153 yards, a couple of touchdowns through the air. Think on it. 
This is a team, and it's been a great run for Dutch Fork. And far from over, you expect them to be in the thick of things as time goes forward. But, Coach, can you just imagine the celebration coming at the reservation in Gaffney, the Christmas parade still out there in front? What a moment that's going to be. And they'll be talking about this one in the barber shops and beyond for decades and generations to come. It's a serious football community, that's for sure. And you can tell that by watching the fans line up today trying to get into the stadium. They were here, as somebody said, even for the first game, tailgating, just anticipating this exciting game, and it certainly was for all of us. They embraced typical Gaffney. They embraced back in black, and they've already printed the headline, Stacy. They got the, the ledger hold it up yeah, and uh, taking a moment to just soak it all in. Your final thoughts on this championship weekend. What a tremendous run of championships it's been. We are, we have some great games. Shout out to all the winners and props and respect to all. And we wanted a close game. Everyone wanted a close game and we got one. I said all week, the, the game I thought would be close would be the 5A game. And we got an instant classic tonight. Down goes Dutch Fork and all hell Gaffney. They're back on top where they used to be. You mentioned eight, 18 times now. So that's the way you put a bow on a good championship weekend. Nobody better across the decades, across the century plus now, these Gaffney Indians that have continued to find a way to come to Columbia and walk away with state championships. Print the sweatshirts. You can go ahead and print the paper up. I guess it's all ready to go. Gaffney is your 5A champion. Well, we say thanks for joining our outstanding crew across the course of this weekend. Been tremendous to have you with us. We thank QFS Transportation. South Carolina DX, a and Fire and Water Transportation, Will Lou Gray, Rushes, John's RV, Papowski and Shirley Law, Sound and Images, Farm Bureau Insurance, Experience Columbia, Ingalls, Roper, St. Francis, all those partners making it possible for you to enjoy these games. And for everybody who was on the mic for Sinclair and all those behind the scenes, our heroes making these broadcasts possible, we say thank you. Another memorable year in the Palmetto State draws to a close. Congratulations to all this weekend's champions, South Point, Daniel, Gray Collegiate, Southside Christian, and the Gaffney Indians here tonight. Best wishes for a bright and Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. We wish tidings of comfort and joy to you and all around you in this season and for a lifetime. The Gaffney Indians have a first 5A title and an 18th championship in their storied history. The operable number, 22, as they won at 22-19 over Dutch Fork. We'll leave you with the sights and sounds from the weekend of champions in Columbia as Gaffney once again reigns supreme.
adversity. You got hit in the mouth. You're